On this episode of Emery Lane, you will be seeing the unthinkable, the unimaginable. Bootleg, unleashing schemes on the Sega Genesis. Sega Genesis. Sega Genesis. This channel is designed for adults viewing only and certain videos will contain rated M for mature video games, featuring realistic violence, gore and suggestive themes. If you are not an adult, do not view the content on this channel. Don't go anywhere, stay tuned. Get ready to take a trip down every lane. This year, Nintendo may be up against some serious competition. During the late 80s and early 90s, video game corporation Sega gained major popularity with the Sega Genesis, selling over 30 million units worldwide. What Nintendo don't. The 16-bit Genesis system by Sega. Genesis does it all. Sega became a main stable in the video game industry, going head-to-head -head with Nintendo. I love it. I think it's great. The 16-bit microprocessor allows for enhanced graphics, more memory capability, stereo sound, depth perception, simulated 3D. You now have a game that is richly enhanced a game that uh, is very, very similar to that that you would find in the arcade. So what defined the Sega Genesis? The Sega Genesis certainly had great exclusives that defined what made the Sega Genesis so different from the rest. And you had games like Streets of Rage, Golden Axe, Sonic the Hedgehog. You had all kinds of exclusives, even a Michael Jackson game. It was a big deal. There's plenty of games on the Genesis that you cannot get on the, uh, the other consoles. As Sega once said, Genesis does, but Nintendo don't. Over in North America, despite having hundreds of great games in the Sega Genesis library, there's always a desire to play more games. Some of the earliest unlicensed cartridges available for the Sega Genesis were some of these unlicensed cartridges that allowed us to play various different games from Japan and also these cheat codes. But there was always that desire to play even more Sega Genesis games. Down in Brazil, the Sega Genesis and the Sega Master System were, were quite popular, and there was a weird assortment of games that released down in Brazil, such as Duke Nukem. Now, I remember hearing about Duke Nukem in the 90s, and it blew my mind that this could actually be true. And this was the earliest memory of a bootleg, unlicensed game available for the Sega Genesis that I can even remember. Now, fast forward to modern time, and nowadays you see tons and tons of weird bootleg games popping up on the Sega Genesis. But it all started down in Brazil, I would say. Now, without any further ado, let's start off with the game that sparked it all, the Duke Nukem. What are we playing? Duke Nukem 3D, and as you can see here, this is a poorly disgusting printed label. Now, I found this on AliExpress, so obviously this is a uh, pretty much a bootleg cartridge. And I highly doubt that if you find the real tech toy Brazilian cartridge that it would even work on an American Sega Genesis, I'm not sure. But as you saw, like last week we uh, did a video on Wolfenstein 3D on the Sega Genesis. And if you missed that video, uh, go check the uh, my page out and you'll see that the, the video's on there. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and comment down below because I have more bizarre cartridges sitting right up there ready for some more videos so you're gonna be seeing some crazy bizarre stuff you'll never know you'll never believe what I have up there I got like a whole box of weird shit that just came from uh, China and um this is a 16-bit cartridge caution avoid expand of course they spelled avoid wrong so right away there's a lot of misspellings on here so that's pretty funny. And uh, the print label quality, as you can see here, this is horrible. They have stretched the Duke Nukem picture out so far that this does not look right at all. And the end label, as you can see right there, you see Duke Nukem on it at least, so that's okay. But the actual image itself is pretty poor quality and you have the Mega Drive, fake Mega Drive logo right there. And you have a very stretched Weird looking uh, Sega logo right there. You have the Tech Toy logo right there. You see some lines in the print. So, whoever printed this did a pretty bad job. 
It's a nice glossy uh, label, by the way. It's not the uh, print job is horrible, but the the label is actually nice and glossy, and it sticks quite well, except for maybe right there. So yeah, your typical knockoff bootleg cartridge for an unlicensed game that should have never existed to begin with, but somehow it did. So. Let's head over to the Sega Genesis and let's have some fun with Duke Nukem 3D and let's check out uh, how interesting this game is. So you can see right there we have our Sega Genesis and uh, we have our Duke Nukem 3D cartridge right here. We're going to use the 6 button controller and we're going to put it inside the Sega Genesis right here and let's head over to the CRT and try out an unbelievable, unlicensed Duke Nukem 3D on the Sega Genesis. Here we are playing Duke Nukem 3D on the Sega Genesis. That's a game I definitely never would have imagined being on the Sega Genesis, but here it is. Let's uh, check it out. Got the Sega logo right there. Got the Tech Toy logo, very famous over in Brazil. I guess Tech Toy actually made it very possible to have Sega games over in Brazil. Let's see if we can uh, unravel my controller here for a second. We got the uh, six button Sega Genesis controller. Got the 3D Realms logo, and so far I'm not hearing any audio. What's going on here? Oh, well here it is. We got some audio. We got the Duke Nukem uh, title screen right here. It looks appropriate. It looks just like a Duke Nukem 3D title screen on the PC, except with a little bit less color. But respectfully, for the Sega Genesis standards, this looks really good. And uh, what do we got here? Looks like a little demonstration of what the gameplay looks like, and somehow Tech Toy, I don't know how they did it, but they it's definitely not the same Duke Nukem 3D that you would have on PC, PlayStation, or Sega Saturn, but they made their own version of Duke Nukem 3D and put it on the Sega Genesis, and it looks okay. It's really weird. Now, I remember seeing this, uh, a ROM for this game that existed like a long time ago. This came out in the 90s. I'm not exactly sure exactly what year this came out. Let's go to help. This gives you basically uh, an idea of how to play this game. You got button A, button B, button C, button D. There's a D button. Okay, that must be the direction pad. Alright, so let's uh, try Duke Nukem 3D on the Sega Genesis. Let's rock. I don't have any ammunition, oh no. The only thing I have is kicking power. Oh, that's not going to get me anywhere. I mean, it's unbelievable that they were actually able to develop this game on the... Uh, on the Sega Genesis, so Genesis, the CPU wasn't designed to be playing games like that, but it actually works pretty well. Alright, so let's uh, see what other things are in here for a second before we... Uh, let's try a piece of cake. Piece of cake. Let's see if that's easier. So we're entering the spaceport. Let's see if this is easier. Now, just in case you missed it, I did a video on the um, the Wolfenstein 3D port for the uh, Sega Genesis. It's actually quite the interesting game. Uh, so far, the easy mode is definitely a lot easier. I can actually get somewhere. Except when I kick that 
vehicle thing, that flying spaceship. It blew me up, so you cannot get near that thing when you kill it. That's a pain in the ass. So that is a little bit of an example of Duke Nukem 3D. The Brazilian tech toy release being played on real hardware. The uh, first model Sega Genesis. And, uh, it's actually quite impressive. It's probably not the greatest first person shooter to exist, but for the Sega Genesis standards, it actually is quite impressive. It's not bad at all. It's actually really good. It's a different version of Duke, 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 uh, Duke Nukem 3D. Got tongue tied there for a second. So if you're used to playing the PC version, the Sega Saturn version, or the uh, what other version of Duke Nukem 3D exists? You got the PlayStation, Saturn, the PC version. You got the GameCom version, which is horrible. Now this is a completely different version of the game. It's quite interesting. That table can only mean one thing. We're we'll be checking out some crazy Sega Genesis ROM hacks. And uh, without any further ado, let's. Uh, this is an exclusive for this uh, video over right here. So, what happens when you combine Streets of Rage 3 and Sonic 2 together? Let, let's let's find out. I mean, this has always worked for me in the past. So, whoa, it actually worked. Sonic the Hedgehog Streets of Rage. Is this even possible? Let's find out. And we are playing the Sega Genesis, and this is an exclusive uh, special little segment here for the. Uh, Bootleg Sega Genesis Collection for Memory Lane. And then we're playing a Streets of Rage a ROM hack bootleg little game right here. Let's check out what we have here. And the, uh, the menu looks about the same. Let's go into the options menu. You got the, uh, the music, you can hear that. Yeah, that music, oh my god, you hear that? You hear that? I mean, what is that? That gives you a little hint on what this is. Alright, so if you haven't figured out by now, this is a Beavis and Butthead ROM hack. Alright, let's uh, get into the game right here. Actually, no, it's not. It's the Sonic the Hedgehog ROM hack. I could have sworn I heard Beavis and Butthead's voice. What the hell is that? Okay, well, I'm a little confused now. Here, we have the uh, countdown for this right here. We got Sonic the Hedgehog right there, and I, I've never played this before. Apparently, Sonic the Hedgehog. There's a ROM hack for this. This is ridiculous. He's like the hedgehog beat the shit out of all the enemies right here. Oh my god! Oh! Oh, oh he's doing a spin dash on them! That is crazy! What the hell? This actually works pretty well. I didn't think that this was going to work as well as it did. And again, this is a special... Don't go anywhere because there's going to be a lot more than uh, this. This is a pretty lengthy video. But you're going to be seeing all tons and tons of crazy bootleg games on the Sega Genesis that you would never even imagine seeing. Now this right here is really interesting. I, I've never even seen this before. But this is... What happens when you combine Sonic the Hedgehog and Streets of Rage? Here it is. And this kind of proves that Sonic the Hedgehog in a beat em up game, that would be very interesting. Oh my god, he grabbed him. Get off me. That son of a bitch. So we're going to be playing a few exclusive games on here. and I'm going to be showing off some older content as well that you guys probably might have seen already. So this video is going to be packed full of a lot of different things, so don't go anywhere. And, uh, stay tuned, because you're going to be seeing a lot of crazy stuff here. Oh, kick his ass. He is stabbing Sonic the Hedgehog with a knife. I mean, that is... Really... 
It's a Nintendo fanboy. Oh, yeah. That's it. Swing the hedgehog with a knife. That is the scariest shit ever. Oh, my God. Oh, he stabs upwards. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Sonic is so short that he has to stab like upwards. Yeah, take that, you son of a bitch. He's stabbing him. Oh. It reminds me of like a Chucky doll. Oh my god. Oh, he tossed me. These are a Nintendo executives trying to t trying to take out Sega. They should mod a uh, Streets of Rage game and give it that storyline. You have all the uh, Nintendo executives, Nintendo of America, trying to take out Sega of America. It's up to Sonic to save Sega. Oh my god, look at... Yes, yeah, the sword right here, and the sword's literally bigger than Sonic. He's doing a spin dash with the sword. If Sonic the Hedgehog with a sword, that would be real dangerous. I mean, look at this. Oh, that fat son of a bitch. If you're wondering what the special is here, you push A. He has a special spin dash right there. It drains some of his life, much like any of the other normal Streets of Rage characters. Let's kick his ass. Oh my god. Look at this. Alright, so let's get that. Oh my. Oof. Alright, so this game right here. We're not going to play the whole game, but you can see pretty much. This is a Streets of Rage game with Sonic the Hedgehog modded into the game, and it's actually pretty good. So, uh, so the person that made this game, they did a pretty good job. There is a ROM hacking site that features all kinds of Streets of Rage modifications, so you never know what you're going to see. So this is definitely really awesome, though, so that would be that. It's Sonic the Hedgehog Streets of Rage. Pretty self-explanatory, and it works. I didn't think it was going to work, and I, for a second, I thought I was going to be playing the Beavis and Butthead Streets of Rage game, but this came up instead. But stay tuned towards the middle of the video, you're, you're going to be seeing the uh, Beavis and Butthead Streets of Rage ROM hack. We're going to be playing Mario 4, so I guess this might be Super Mario 4. And it definitely looks like it's Russian. And the uh, print quality of the label is really, really bad, so I don't really know what the hell this is. But some sort of Russian Super Mario game. And, uh, you no, know, I, I do have a couple of Russian viewers that can actually fill me in on this, because I guess these games were more common over in Russia. So if you know what this is, comment down below and let us know. It's, uh, this is going to be a mystery to me. We're going to play it in about a few minutes, and uh, the uh, label art definitely came from, like, Super Mario Galaxy or something like that. Uh, yeah, so... Let's head over to the Sega Genesis and let's try this mystery Mario game. Find out exactly what it is. Let's go over there. Alright, so we have our Sega Genesis all set up right there. Let's not waste any time. We're going to pop in Super Mario 4. It's basically what I'm going to call this. There's definitely something else to it more than what I can see here. And uh, let's play that mystery Super Mario game and find out exactly what the deal is on this game. All right, here we are playing some sort of mystery Super Mario game. It's uh, Mario 4, some Russian game right here. Let's check this out. We got ourselves an introduction. I don't think I've played this one yet. We definitely got ourselves a Russian introduction right here. 
and it looks very, very sinister and dark. Look at that. It looks like the world is burning. What the hell's going on here? Mario 4. And this is some sort of Russian Mario game. And here we are playing Mario 4. And it looks like you have enemies from Super Mario Bros. 2. There was another Mario game that I, I did a video on that looked quite similar. Oh my god, what the hell? I think the game froze. It's gonna be one of those. Jumping is like super awkward. Oh my god! What the hell is that? And when you die, the game freezes. It's like he jumped in slow motion to his death. Oh, he almost didn't make that jump either. Oh no, he died. Wow, I actually started. Oh. I have to keep hitting reset. What the hell is this? The jumping is so not good. It's like it throws me off and see the game. Okay, so that's two players. So you have to play as Luigi. Hey, we actually made it across. All right. And we went down a tunnel and then we froze. So okay, so. There was definitely another Mario game that I played on the Genesis that was pretty similar to this. That same exact thing, froze constantly. All right, let's not go through any tunnels. Let's see if we can make it to the end. Oh, what the hell is that? Oh! It has some really weird sound effects. Not the good ones here. It kind of makes your ears want to bleed a little bit. Oh, oh my god. Look at this. So this is Super Mario Brothers 4, some weird Russian game. That's the option menu right there. And I went down the hole, and whenever you fall down the hole, it freezes on my Sega Genesis. I don't know, maybe over in Russia, the game works normal. My Sega Genesis does not like Russian games. Look how Mario walks. Look at that. Like he has to get to a bathroom real quick. Oh, that was close. I thought I went down the hole. What the hell is this? I was going to try to go down that. Oh, no! 
Son of a bitch. We've been only playing this for five minutes and it's already kind of feeling like it's been ten minutes already. Alright, so if we jump up here, the jumping is really awkward. about that guy. That guy is... Apparently those things you can't jump on. Those bomb... You can... Oh my god. Why would you do that? Plenty of... I wonder if this is the same Mario game that I played before that was freezing. So that's... I don't know what that says, but you know, I have, I have a few Russian viewers that might be able to translate that. And I'm just wondering, is this like a normal game that you would find in Russia? Or what, the, what the hell is this? But that is Super Mario 4. In Russia, a nice quick video, nothing really fancy here, but it's not the greatest. The jumping is pretty bad, but it's just another weird, obscure bootleg Mario game that exists on Sega Genesis that should not exist, but it does. And it's quite interesting. So, if you enjoyed this episode of Memory Lane, don't forget to comment down below and let me know what you think. Uh, I think this game is crazy. If you guys want to see more, I got some more stuff. I'm gonna show off more stuff soon. Just gonna grab something by random here. Let's see, we have a copy of WrestleMania. And now let's see what else we got here. I'm just gonna grab something completely random. Let's see. Alright, so there we go. Let's grab it right off the shelf. So we have a copy of uh, Streets of Rage. And a copy of WrestleMania with Hulk Hogan. Look at that. Featuring Hulk Hogan and other WWF superstars. What could possibly happen if these two are combined together? I mean, is this going to even work? It worked for ET and Tennis. Let's, uh, let's find out. Let's see what we got here. Brother, the interstate's in danger. Holy shit. It actually worked. I can't believe it. Streets of Rage, it's Streets of Hulkamania. Alright, here we are playing Streets of Hulkamania. And let's see how this plays out here. This is going to be insane. Never thought I would see such a thing. And it looks like we have our normal uh, Streets of Rage introduction right here. Let's get the uh, audio turned down a little bit. And we have, uh, so far, your normal introduction for uh, Streets of Rage. So we have Streets of Rage 2, brother. You see that? It has a little brother thing right there. That's nuts. <laughs> so you can either play American or Americans, which is two-player mode. Alright, let's see what we got here. And apparently we do have a uh, Hulk Hogan character right there. Look at that. Let's try this out. We have a Hulk Hogan running around here. Let's see. Is that, oh my god. What the hell? This is insane. He looks like he can't, he, they, they took the character model from a WrestleFest or Superstars the arcade game. 
He does the boot also. I never thought I would see such a thing. That is crazy. Hulk Hogan is running around beating up all these thugs. Look at this. Whoa, what the hell was that? He did it like some sort of baseball slide. Let's see what other kind of moves he can do. He, oh, can he pick up a knife? Oh, Hulk Hogan stabbing people. What the hell? What the hell is going on here? Oh my god. He's stabbing him right in the, in the face. What the hell's wrong with Hulk Hogan? He's fighting for the rights of every man, of all Americans right here. He has a pipe. Oh, come here, come here, you son of a bitch. The only thing that the game is missing is the, uh, the Hulk Hogan theme music, Real American. You play that to, a, like, a 16-bit Sega Genesis version of that, and perfect. Look at that, he's doing a drop kick. Come here! Oh, drop kick. You can drop kick people. I mean, you can do a leg drop, that is. He's actually doing the, the uh, Hulk Hogan leg drop. Look at this, watch this. Come here! Doing a suplex. Alright, well now we got some uh, action going on over here. Oh, oh! He's getting his ass kicked now. Let me see if, oh, kick his ass. Oh, oh, what the hell? I wonder what his special is. Let's, let's find out. Oh, it looks like I'm stuck. He's stabbing the crap out of him. Look. For a second, I was stuck. I don't know why. Alright, so Hulk Hogan feels like having a little bit of dinner. Maybe perhaps a little bit of lunch. So we, uh, we're going to go order our uh, food over here for a second. Let's see if we can go order a little bit of uh, lunch. And uh, right away, we, we run into some, some trouble here. Apparently we've got a bunch of uh, people that do not like Hulk Hogan. And they want to fight Hulk Hogan. And uh, this actually almost happened not too long ago. Apparently Ric Flair and Hulk Hogan were at like some bar or some sort of restaurant and a group of guys tried to fight Ric Flair and Hulk Hogan. And uh, I mean for Christ's sakes, Ric Flair and Hulk Hogan are and they're seven, they're, they gotta be past 70 years old. Or close to it. Now look at this, this is insane. Look at that. Yo, you got some head of lock, what the hell? Alright, so we still haven't seen our special yet. We're gonna save that, and we got the uh, bartender here, and... Oh, oh, what the hell? She's beating me up. It would have been cool if they uh, reskinned all the uh, the enemies and turned them into like the uh, the Hitting family with Andre the Giant and all the uh, the bad guys, all the heels from the Hitting family back in the '80s. That would have been pretty cool. Come here. Did a leg drop and uh, he won. So far, this is pretty interesting. All right, so we uh, we're outside. It's raining. They're beating up everybody. We got our first uh, little guy right here that wants to try to cause problems with us. Now, I believe this is technically a Streets of Rage 2 mod, so uh, even though I grabbed Streets of Rage 1, I think the combination that we got here is Hulk Hogan. And Streets of Rage Part 2, I think. Now, that was a pretty easy beatdown right there. So we cleared stage number one right there. With our little bit of Hulkamania action going on. That, that is nuts. And you never know what you're going to see next, but so far... This is, this is actually pretty cool. Come here, brother! I'm gonna punch him in the face. 
Looks like we're uh, a bridge reader, and Hulk Hogan definitely enjoys motorcycles. So that guy's gonna get his ass off that motorcycle pretty soon. This is ridiculous. I just, I just can't believe that I'm seeing it. Hulk Hogan beating up all these guys right here. And Streets of Rage. This is really weird. Come here! He did, oh my god, he did a leg drop. A Hulk Hogan leg drop on a motor, motorcycle. He's in a, a pipe and beating the shit out. Yeah, take that. Take that, you son of a bitch. Doing another leg drop, and then oh my god, what the hell was that? All right, let's find out what the specials are here. So, apparently, a clothesline. Oh, does that make his life strain up? Oh, yeah, I, I think it does. What the hell? Oh my god. Okay, we got some uh, explosions going off here. It's your typical uh, Streets of Rage action going on with the addition of Hulk Hogan. Look at this. Oh, he cracked me right in the face with that pipe. And he got the big boot to the face. Not that leg drop. Oh. This guy's just standing there. I don't know what his problem is. But he got some. All right. Now we got this guy right here. He wants some of Hulkamania. Let's see if uh, he, he can bring it. Oh my god, what the hell? You got the close line, yeah. Oh, that definitely drains my health. I'm not gonna do that again. We did a big leg trap. What the hell was that? He broke through the wall and then ran back real quick. This is really cool. So down in the description, uh, give a little description on who, uh, Designed this rum hack, and I get a kick out of it. I think it's pretty cool. Oh! It'd be cool to see more rum hacks like this. Or take this rom hack and add to it, like change all the enemies. Do you remember the the movie? With Hulk Hogan no holds barred. Make a Streets of Rage mod. But with uh the whole crew from uh No Holds Barred. Which I uh, believe that Hulk Hogan's name was Rip in that movie. And I have all the other enemies be like Zeus and all the other guys. That'd be pretty cool. Get over here. <laughs> There's so many leg drops going on here. Oh my god, what the hell was that? Oh, did a close line. Yeah, punch this guy. Oh my god, what the hell? Yeah, it took that right to the face. Yeah. Oh, what? No way. Oh! Oh my god. So, uh, Hogan's gonna grab a microphone and cut a promo on this guy. Wait, what do you know something, brother? And what would Hogan say to him? He's like, yo, you wanna fly around? We got another thing coming, brother. 
24 inch pythons are gonna take you down. Straight to the ground, brother. His name is Jet, so. Get over here, brother. Oh! That's it, I gotta do a leg drop to him. And end his, his uh, pathetic jetpack life. Over here. Oh. Okay, he's around here somewhere. I don't know where he went. Where the hell is he? Oh, coward. He waits till my back's turned. Oh. Oh. He drained the most of my life down already. What the hell? Got a leg drop in right there. Oh my god. Is he gonna do it again? How many leg drops am I gonna have to deliver to take this guy? Oh my god. I'm just gonna type in some random. Just don't give up. So yeah, that's uh... Streets of Hulkamania. Never thought I would see such a thing, but that is actually pretty cool. So if you're a fan of old school wrestling and Streets of Rage, this is pretty damn cool and it's a good start. You never know what you're going to see next. Super Mario World 64 for the Sega Genesis. You heard that correctly. Super Mario World 64 for the Sega Genesis, a game that never even released on any Nintendo console at all. Super Mario World 64. What the hell is that? You have Super Mario right there flying with his little cape looking thing right there and the, all the enemies are like pissing themselves. Look at that. What the hell is going on here? You got the, uh, the end labels kind of coming off like any normal bootleg Sega Genesis game. The end label always peels off right there in the corner. Look at that. That's a, the first indication that you have a bootleg Sega Genesis game right there. Now, this, the second indication is this really cheap caution notification on the back. It says avoid and it's spelt wrong. The first letter, the first word on the back of this is spelt incorrectly. Look at that. And, uh, yeah. So, got the cheap screws, all that stuff. And this is a uh, official Sega seal quality, which is bullshit. So, <laughs> let's, uh... Head over to the Sega Genesis and let's check out what Super Mario World 64 is all about. I mean, let's find out exactly what this game is. This is weird. Well, here we have our Sega Genesis with the 32X on the very top. With the famous old mushroom sheep. I'm going to clean it off for a second. Let's see if I can uh, give it a good old whip down. Always one thing that I hate is dust, and literally every single episode of Memory Lane, I have to wipe this down. And uh, this is prop two. This was not planned. I was not planning on wiping this down on camera, but I'm gonna do it anyways. Because I don't like it. So, yeah, that's a little bit better. Uh, what I probably will do eventually is get dust covers for the Sega Genesis. I wonder if that exists. So, here we have our cartridge. Let's pop it right in there and let's try out Super Mario World 64. What the hell is that? All right, here we are playing the Sega Genesis right here. Oh my god, the volume. Super Mario World 64, what the hell is this? You would figure by now that with my experience of recording 
gameplay footage that I would have the volume already turned down on the computer, but every, <laughs> nearly every single episode I make the same exact mistake. Uh, just by looking at this, it looks like Super Mario World. What the hell is this? And that's uh, pretty funny because the last Mario game that I reviewed on the Sega Genesis was Super Mario World. And it looks nothing like Super Mario World at all. And this actually looks like Super Mario World. I mean, look at this. This is Dinosaur Land. And uh, here we are. I'm going to back up a little bit. I don't want to go blind. I mean, what the hell? Holy crap, it looks just like Super Mario World. Oh, 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 what the hell is that? <laughs> this is insane. It looks just like Super Mario World. It looks just like Super Mario World. That is crazy. And the, the actual controls are really good, too. Man, this is, uh... Interesting. I mean, so far, this is probably one of the better Super Mario ROM hacks that I've played on the Sega Genesis. Run! Holy crap, that was close. There's a bit of a delay on his running. It's, it's really weird, but it's actually not bad. Oh! You have to duck down right there. And then jump back. Oh my god. Run up there and get that Yoshi coin, metal, whatever you want to call it. Thing. Got the dinosaur little creature right there. And, uh, yeah, it, it looks pretty close to the Super Nintendo version. It's uh, kind of crazy that this looks almost just like Super Mario World on the uh, Super Nintendo. Whoa, what the hell is that? Give me that. Alright. And there's a good reason they put that there. And you can even do the spin jump. That is insane. How about that? Let's see if we make it over here. And I guess whenever you jump on... It's a bit harder than the Super Nintendo version because... When you try to jump on these uh, tubes right here, the enemies on the Super Nintendo version, they usually stop jumping out. On uh, this version right here, they still jump, so you have to like be real careful. You have to pretty much do that right there, that's frightening. And I've got a checkpoint, yeah! And uh, this game is... Oh, man! So you have to be careful where you land right there, because if you jump on that turtle... You can accidentally bounce into another one. Let's see if we can make it over here. Oh. Now we have to get back onto that platform. That platform's a little tricky. So you have to wait until a certain time, like right here, to actually jump on that. The timing is very important. Oh, what the hell is that? Wow. Did that platform kill me or something? I mean, I lost my super big power. I don't think I bumped into an enemy. Oh! The frustration. Alright, so... The timing is off. And it's not the game, it's me. The more I play a game, the more I get frustrated, the worse I play. As you can see there. I think it's time to call it quits. Okay, let's uh, give this a try again. All right, 
right, so we should be okay here. Okay, the timing was good that time. We have to make sure that we, uh... Ooh, oh, okay. Well, that worked. Now we just have to get it up down here. And there we go. So far we're doing okay. Now over here, we kind of probably don't want to bump into that thing. Now the last time I bumped into that platform, it killed me for some reason. So what I'm going to do is probably I'm going to kill that turtle. What the hell? Hey, I jumped on it twice! What's going on here? So you can see the game's not perfect. Oh, you son of a bitch! I tell you, this game is pretty fun, but it's frustrating. It's actually pretty good. It's not perfect at all. By any of these ROM hack homebrew weird games, you're not going to find perfection. That's definitely not what you're going to find at all. Uh, it's definitely a pleasant surprise, though. It's actually the, the controls are pretty good. Alright, so here we go. So I'll right on that, jump over here, and so far we're doing pretty well. Alright, let's uh, see if we can kill that damn turtle. Alright, we made it onto- oh my god. So you have to be careful how you jump here. Oh, that came out of nowhere. Oh, son of- oh, I almost landed on whatever that was. You have to really study the platform, and it's basically laid out similar to the actual real thing on the Super Nintendo. So if you're familiar with that, you'll probably enjoy playing this. I find this to be more trickier. Is it, 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 the mechanics are slightly different. It's, it's not quite the same. But, it's pretty fun. Let me see if we can, uh... Out of all the Mario games I've played, this one is actually probably the funnest to play on the Sega Genesis. And, uh, if you go back... Within the past couple months, i probably put out... Five or six Mario videos of weird Mario games on the Sega Genesis. That should not even exist, but they do. Oh, you son of a bitch! Well, that is uh, Super Mario World 64, a game that is basically a Super Mario World clone for the Sega Genesis. Really weird, but it exists and it's actually pretty fun. So if you enjoyed this episode of Memory Lane and you want to see more strange, weird ROM hack videos for any console, Nintendo, Sega, 64, whatever I have here, uh, don't forget to give a thumbs up and comment down below and let me know what you think because I actually have fun playing this. It's actually pretty fun. We're going to be checking out Super Mario World for the Sega Genesis and you're seeing that correctly. And how is that even possible? Let's uh, take a close look here. We have a stretched, bizarre looking uh, label art right there. Um, we don't even have an end label, this is Mega Drive on top. But it says Super Mario World right there, 60 bit cartridge for use with the Sega Mega Drive. Uh, what the hell is this? I mean, this is weird. So, we're gonna be uh, checking this out, and let's find out exactly. And you see that the, uh, the end label is popping up right there. Very, very cheap label, and the, the print quality on this. It's so-so. Uh, the bottom portion of it's okay, I guess. It, the uh, Sega logo's stretched right there on the bottom. It's definitely not the greatest. And 
All that illustration right there with the Mario and Bowser and Yoshi, that's all stretched out. You can definitely tell that it's not in its proper form. And uh, we're going to definitely check this out and see exactly what we're going to be getting ourselves into here. Really, really weird looking. So let's uh, head over to the Sega Genesis and let's try this out. Alright, so we have our Sega Genesis over here. I'm going to pop the cartridge in. And uh, let's try out Super Mario World on the Sega Genesis. I never thought I would say that, but let's uh, go play it. Let's find out what it is. All right, here we are playing Super Mario World on the uh, Sega Genesis. This is really weird. Super Mario World on the Sega Genesis. What the hell is this? And it says Super Mario Brothers. Okay, so that's definitely not what I was expecting. Alright, this is definitely not Super Mario World. And you can pick up boxes. What the hell? And you can throw boxes. Look at this. Oh my god. Look at this. You can't smash. Are you kidding me? You can't smash bricks anymore? You can't jump on turtles? What the hell kind of Mario game is this? This is definitely not Super Mario World on the uh, Super Nintendo, I can tell you that. This is a weird game, like I've never seen this before. There's an actual health pack. Like a first aid kit. What the, oh, you can't, I keep forgetting, you can't jump on these guys. It's so weird. Is there any tunnels you can go down? Like... This is a strange Super Mario hack. I've, I've never... Look at that! So you can hide inside the box. Let me see how that works. That is pretty cool. Oh, 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 no! I made it to the end. Is this like a ROM hack or something, or is this an actual real Mario game? It's really weird. Yeah, the sound effects don't sound Mario-ish at all. But the game is, it looks pretty good. Like, the graphics look actually good on it. It's, it's really weird. Like, this is a really strange Mario uh, game on the Sega Genesis. That should not exist at all, but it does. It's not half bad either. It's actually very, very different from a normal Mario game. But at the same time, it's actually fun. It's not bad. So you can actually kill your enemies only with boxes, like what you can see here. Oh my god, what the hell is that? So we have to kill Bowser with the boxes, oh my god. Yeah, whoever made this game actually did a good job. Yeah, it's actually a very, very well-functioning game. Oh my... No! Oh shit! You might hear uh, some plowing going on outside. We have uh, quite a bit of snow. I'm gonna say, this game is actually not bad. It's definitely not your normal 
Super Mario game, but it's actually pretty cool. Oh, we got Big Ass Bowser. So I guess you get a limited amount of a power that you can use to shoot. Oh! I think I should. Oh, oh my god, what the hell? Alright, so I think I got like maybe one more hit to go before he dies. What the hell? He, th he threw it upwards instead of sideways, damn it. What an idiot. He did it again! What the hell? You gotta be kidding me. This is like the hardest part of the game right here. As expected. Oh, what the heck? I lost one firepower. This didn't work. Wow. This is frustrating. That did not register. It hit his legs, but it wasn't good enough. Oh, oh, oh. Alright, so that's two hits. I think that's five hits right there. I'm pretty sure. Oh! Damn! easy to like mess up on this part well that is uh, supposedly Super Mario World on the Sega Genesis I I don't think that's Super Mario World I think that's probably some other ROM hack but the label says Super Mario World so it's weird it's a really interesting uh Mario game. Now, according to the title screen here, what's it say here? It does say Super Mario World. Okay, so. There you go, Super Mario World on the Sega Genesis. Really weird. So, if you enjoyed that episode of Memory Lane and you want to see more, don't forget to give a thumbs up and comment down below and let me know what you think. Alright, that's it. We can only mean one thing. What happens when you take Streets of Rage 3 and Beavis and Butthead and combine it together? Let's uh, head over to the Sega Genesis. Uh, this is going to be outrageous. Alright, here we are playing... Hopefully it works. Oh, here we go. A, uh, another bootleg Genesis Streets of Rage game right here. Let's, let's check this out. It's another Streets of Rage. Let's see if this uh, if this works. Let's find out. And there we have Beavis and Butthead as promised in the beginning of the video, which I thought I was actually playing this to begin with. So let's uh, pick Beavis right here. <laughs> this is the super ridiculous ROM hack. And we got the uh, normal... And you can see that the dialogue has been changed also. You have actually Beavis and Butthead actually talking. Like, look at this. This is... It says, hey, Butthead. Who is this robo-turd? And he... <laughs> so the, the, the game has a lot of comical humor from the Beavis and Butthead cartoon. So that definitely makes the game much better. Let's, let's uh, check this out. And there we go. 
nice huge character model from Beavis and Butthead. I mean, look at this. And you can definitely hear Beavis making the sound effects. I mean, <laughs> you can see his mouth. And he's, like, oh my God. he's doing a suplex. This is, oh, what, what the hell is that? They definitely took the uh, character from the Be Beavis and Butthead game. It, it looks just like the cartoon. It looks pretty good. I mean, look at this. Oh, he's headbutting me, son of a bitch. No, no, oh my god. And let's see if we can beat the shit out of people here. Now let's get going over here. Oh, he's headbutting me. And this is a pretty much standard Beavis and Butthead action going on here, except he's trapped in the role of the Streets of Rage. And he burps too! Did you see that? What the hell was that? He's grabbing my head. Oh my god. So let's, uh, let's, uh, find out. I want to make sure that my mic is not on too high. Let's see if we can, uh... Just headbutt me. Oh! Alright, what happens when you push A? Let's find out. Oh, he shoots a weapon. How about that? He also does karate kicks. You see that? Look at that. Oh! Oh my god. Let's go forward here. See if we can get forward. This game is. Oh, look how he runs. I mean, look at that. That's ridiculous. Now, this weapon, though, whatever this is, it, it works really effective. <laughs> I get a kick out of him screaming. That's uh, pretty funny. I'm gonna turn my mic down just, just a little bit here. Alright, is that better? That might be a little bit better. Let's see if we can. Maybe that's a little bit better. Yeah! That might be just a little bit better than what it was before. For some reason, my mic volume is up higher than normal. I did a suplex. Alright, so we're gonna play only like the first level here. Okay, we got a knife. Oh, he shot him in the face. The ring the head. All right, let's see if we can. Oh, stab! So you got your typical Beavis and Butthead graphics or the rules. Plain as Beavis, but it, it looks pretty good. It's amazing how many modern ROM hacks and bootlegs exist nowadays, and this is crazy stuff. I got the Cortana. Now there is a bit of a graphical glitch where you don't see the Cortana being used. You see that other weapon instead. Now, so this is actually pretty cool. Now, you get the pretty much the idea of this is Beavis and Bud Rum hack, and it's pretty funny. And back in the 90s, it was a very very popular uh, cartoon before. South Park came out and when uh, the Simpsons were still in their prime, this was like the more edgier cartoon back then. So, it would only be fitting to have a ROM hack, a bootleg game of Beavis and Butthead in Streets of Rage. This came out more recent though. But I approve, it's actually pretty cool. Look at this. We're going to be playing another one of those AliExpress bootleg Sega Genesis games, a Pokemon game. And uh, this is Pocket Monsters 2, which obviously is Pokemon. And we have a uh, weird illustration of Pikachu right there, Pika Pika. And uh, 
Yeah, I don't know what that is. Is that a mushroom? Is Pikachu eating mushrooms? Look at his eyes. His eyes definitely look a little dilated. <laughs> There's something definitely going on here. I don't know what that is, but... We got Pocket Monsters 2 for the Sega Genesis. Another one of those unlicensed Sega Genesis games. There is definitely not a seal quality game. I never played this before. I don't know. I'm literally trying this out for the first time on video right here with you guys. Pocket Monster 2, the label quality print is not that good. As you can see, there's streaks going across right there. So whoever printed this out, the printer sucks. They didn't put too much effort into it. The uh, your typical bootleg Sega Genesis cartridges, the, the labels peel up on top. And of course you have the uh, the also famous 16-bit crappy plastic bootleg cartridge with the avoid misspelling right there. You would figure that they would uh, know how to spell that properly before they print a bunch of these cartridges out. Yeah, these, these things are like 3D printed or something. Because they have plastic screws too, that's how cheap they are. So yeah, uh, <laughs> just check out the illustration. I don't know for sure what the hell this is. I'm not sure if it's a platform or an RPG. Most Pokemon games are role-playing. So this is going to be weird. So let's uh, head over to the Sega Genesis and let's play Pocket Monsters 2, which is technically in North America, Pokemon 2 for the Sega Genesis. Let's go uh, check this out. And right over there we have our Sega Genesis ready to be violated by another AliExpress disgusting bootleg cartridge. Pocket Monsters 2, let's uh, pop it in. And now uh, let's head over to the CRT and let's uh, play a Pokemon game on the Sega Genesis. Really bizarre. Alright, so apparently I tried to play this uh, Pokemon game and it would not work for me, so I put it on this EverDrive cartridge on a memory card. And we'll try it out on there. We should have better luck playing it on here. I've made it on the licensed folder full of weird games. So we have Pokemon Monster Monsters 2. And we're going to try it out. See how this works. And now the way the EverDrive works is it erases the previous game from the cartridge. And then it imports the new one onto it in order for the game to play. And we're about to see Pokemon 2, and here we go, Let's see what happens here. And right there on the title screen we have Pocket Monsters 2, Pokemon, and there's a Pikachu. Now the title screen is pretty cool. We've got uh, levels, normal, lives, all that stuff. Really, really cool illustration, illustrations of Pikachu. Nice animation. Apparently, this game freezes also. Which is a shame, because this one, uh... For whatever reason... This game does not like my Sega Genesis. Just for the hell of it. Alright, so let's go back to... You know what, let's choose Pokemon Monsters 1. Let's see if that actually works. That's the risk of playing these games. Sometimes they're crappy and they do not work. On actual hardware. And uh, my Sega Genesis is thrown up right now. Trying to play these games. So here we are, loading the ROM up on the cartridge. 
Now this is Pocket Monsters 1. I have no idea what the hell this is. And we're not getting nothing here. Alright, so what we'll do... We're going to put Echo the Dolphin in there just to test the Genesis out. Just to make sure that... We're not having any issues. And you see right here, that game works fine. This is the real cartridge, so when we insert this cartridge in here... It locks up right here on the title screen. Like, it's a really, really bad bootleg cartridge. What a waste of money. So, let's go back to the EverDrive for a second. So I'd be really, really mad if this cartridge didn't work. So let's choose a uh, any game right here for a second. Let's choose Mortal Kombat, which I own a copy of that back here. So we're going to play Mortal Kombat 1 for a second, just to verify that the EverDrive works the way it should. I just want to debunk whether that cartridge is bad or if that ROM is bad. I think the Pocket Monster games on the Sega Genesis are super broken. Like, they don't like playing on real hardware. So, let's find out. So, here we are. Mortal Kombat spooning up the way it should. Normal. So, that kind of proves that Pocket Monsters on the uh, Sega Genesis, the real hardware, does not like this game at all. So, uh, I guess the Sega Genesis realizes that this is a Nintendo franchise, and it throws up anytime it looks at it. So, uh, anytime you try to play Pokemon on the Sega Genesis, it has some issues. But, I wonder if it works on an emulator. We can definitely try that out. Be something unusual. So, let's power this down for a second. We'll head over to the emulator over here. I have a Linux box that might be able to play it. All right, so here we are trying out this uh, Pokemon game on a Linux box. And let's see if we can move my microphone a little bit closer here. I'm not sure if it's going to be possible. But hopefully you can hear me. And I am going to try to record. Let me see if I can get that microphone closer. All right, that's better. And let's see if this ROM is really a broken ass ROM, and it appears to be a broken ass ROM. Because on a Linux emulator, this is Recall Box, it appears that the uh, ROM freezes up on the actual uh, uh, the emulator as well. So, that is a screenshot of what the game is supposed to look like right there. Just so you guys can see. And uh, I have the actual cartridge right here. Same cartridge as what you see there. But it's a broken ass game. And apparently that's a... Let's try this right here. Let's see if this works. Okay, that is pretty cool. Look at that. Alright, so we have Pocket Monsters. Maybe this one will actually work. This actually looks pretty damn cool. Alright, this game actually works. I have no idea what the button configurations are on this. I'm literally using an Xbox controller right now. I should use my USB Sega Saturn controller. This is really bizarre, but well, at least we're seeing some sort of Pokemon action on the Sega Genesis. Unfortunately, it's uh, not using real hardware. This is using a uh, Linux simulator. But I do like to play, I, I do a lot of ROM collecting, so I do enjoy playing emulators still to give my hardware a rest.
So I usually use my hardware mostly for recording videos. But look at this, this is crazy. This is like a, a Pokemon game on the Sega Genesis, so at least we're not disappointed. At least we got to see something. It's not the exact same one that we had in mind, which is Pokemon 2, Pocket Monsters 2. But this is actually uh, satisfying. This is actually pretty cool. It's a platformer featuring Pikachu. Look at this. And uh, we went through a lot of hell trying to, to get that cartridge working. That cartridge is like defective, and also the um, the game, the ROM itself is just bad. It's a, it's a really bad ROM. Now, I'm not even sure if these other creatures, like that right there, is actual Pokemon. Let's see what time it is here. I think we have enough time here to play a little bit more. And I died! Oh my god, what the hell was that? Now, this is actually... It's not really the greatest of a platformer, but it's actually pretty interesting. I'm not sure if this is a ROM hack of uh, an existing game or not. If it is, if you guys recognize it, please uh, let me know. I don't personally recognize it, so I'm not sure. I wouldn't be surprised if the, if the actual level or the graphics came from a... Oh my god. If it actually came from a different game. It's quite common when it comes to uh, making homebrew or ROM hacks. Usually it's just a modified version of an existing game. Oh, what's going on here? Oh my god! He killed the green dinosaur by electrocuting it. I had no idea you could do that, but that was very violent. Oh, and he jumped to his death. What the hell? So that is... Let's see here. That is Pocket Monsters on the... Uh, the Sega Genesis, um, that's the first one, I guess. And they have a Pokemon Stadium here, too. I wonder if this is actually legitimate. Obviously, it's not an official thing, but... As you can see here, the game doesn't run. It's another broken-ass game, so... Uh, I bought that game right there. does not work. Pocket Monsters 2 does not work on here and it does not work on there so confirmed that game is definitely a broken mess but that's a screenshot of it at least so you guys can actually see what it looks like now at least we got to play the first pocket monsters so if you enjoyed this episode of memory lane and you want to see weird like more weird stuff on the Sega Genesis or any console for that matter uh, comment down below and let me know what you think and it's crazy that I had to resort to playing it on an emulator, but hey, at least we got to see something. You'll never believe this, but hey, I went shopping on AliExpress and I wasn't even knowing what I was shopping for. Then I came across this. This is really, really weird. It's a copy of Wolfstein 3D for the Sega Genesis? You heard me correct. Wolfstein 3D on Sega Genesis. I, I know that this released on Super Nintendo, but what the hell is this? Well, apparently there is a homebrew version of this game. I really don't know too much about what's on this cartridge. I just got it in the mail when I came home from work. I'm filming this at night. I usually don't do night episodes. Now this definitely does appear to be like a bootleg weird looking cartridge. Look at this. It's definitely much weirder feeling than a normal Sega Genesis cartridge. Now, uh, look at the label. The label print quality is probably okay. It's, the, it's not, not the greatest, but it's okay. It's passable. You see that the Sega logo up there doesn't look that great. I did not pay that much for this cartridge. I only paid like three or four dollars. But when I saw it, I was like very, very intrigued. Like, 
I've seen videos of a homebrew version of Wolfstein 3D on YouTube before, but I've never seen it being played on real hardware. So uh, now, let's go play it on real hardware. Let's go check this out. This is a really weird, intriguing surprise. And let's see uh, what this game does on the Sega Genesis. Now keep in mind that this is actually never officially released on Sega Genesis, so this is purely a homebrew, weird, not supposed to exist at all version of Wolfstein 3D. So let's head over to the Sega Genesis. Alright, so we have our Sega Genesis right over there. Let's see if we can zoom in here for a second. And there we go. It's, uh, our lighting's probably not the greatest set during this time of the day. Uh, but there is our Sega Genesis with the 32X. We can probably add a little bit more light here in a second. I think you guys might be able to see it okay. Let's see if we can see that. And we got our six button controller right here. We're going to be using that. And uh, this is the game right here. Hopefully, you guys can see that okay. And we're going to be plugging this into. Sega Genesis right there and uh, yeah let's head over to the CRT and let's try this game out and see exactly what exactly is Wolfstein 3D on the Sega Genesis using real hardware let's uh, see if this actually plays It's time to check out this uh, really, really strange game that I came across on AliExpress. Something that actually never officially existed. Wow, look at this. Wolf Assign 3D for the Sega Genesis. I never thought I would see such a thing, but somebody actually homebrewed this. I've seen it on YouTube. Uh, even the music sounds... Like the real authentic, like DOS version of it, and you see down here it gives credit to who actually did this. So uh, good job to whoever ported this over to the Sega Genesis. And you got the main menu looks just like the uh, PC version. You have a uh, few scores, graphics. So the uh, graphic settings have normal, fixed two, type two, type one. I have no idea what the hell that is. Okay, so we have a debug menu right here. Which I think I'm gonna not play with that because I don't want the game to freeze or do anything crazy. So we're, right now we're using the six button controller, so this is actually good. And apparently it supports the mouse too, according to what that says. So uh, let's uh, start a new game, and we have all six episodes. That is really, really interesting. Got the full game right here. And, uh, I, again, I was shopping for games, and I came across this by accident. I never even would have even imagine having a cartridge version of Wolfenstein 3D for the Sega Genesis. Now uh, everything so far looks pretty good. Wow, look at that. I tell you what, on the CRT TV right here, this looks pretty damn good. Wow, look at that. I can't believe that this is on Sega Genesis. This is awesome. And it's running so good, too. It looks way better than the Super Nintendo version. Look at this. Holy shit, look at this. This is nuts. Wow. I mean, I don't have my mind blown that often by uh, old school games and stuff like that, but I tell you what, this blows my mind. Like, I am actually mind blown by this. Like, usually I don't really care about homebrew stuff, but this is actually probably one of the most impressive homebrew ports I've ever seen in my life. I mean, look at it. this looks really really good holy shit 
And it plays, oh my god, look at that dog. It plays really, really good. Like, no frame rate drops. Look at this. You can see the scale in a little bit, like you... Look, oh shit, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, so if you look off in the distance, you don't quite see the full cell. See, like, walk close to it, but still, I mean, I'm... This is definitely, uh, pretty awesome. Now if you walk out here... If you hold down B, you can run. And the running is actually, it looks pretty good. Let's get some health. Now, I tell you what. I'm actually very, very impressed. Let's go down here. I know there's a hidden little door over here. I used to play this on MS-DOS. Old school PC, all the time. Now, on the PC, there's always, like, a lot of weird mods. Tons of weird mods. And, uh, usually you can, if you go to, like, old school PC gaming shows, you would come across them on floppy disks. And uh, they would give them out as shareware. And, uh, I'm actually mind blown. And the, the audio sounds great. So it's just like the uh, DOS version. It's just really weird. How good that this is on the, uh, the Genesis. I would never... No, I know the Genesis was capable of probably doing this. But the fact that... This was homebrewed and it came out this good. Makes you wonder if ID Software actually took the time to actually make an actual authentic version of this game. How good it would have came out. I mean, this was homebrewed and it came out this good. Much, much better looking than the uh, Super Nintendo version, I can tell you that. I mean, this is crazy. Either that, or they're going to force you to beat episode 1 to get to episode 2, which I don't think that's the case. So I believe that they're, uh... I think that it's probably more like the shareware version of the game, where you only get episode 1. Which, legally, that sounds about right. So I don't think they can get away with selling the whole full version of the game. I could be wrong. But I am very, very impressed by this, and I think I got shot at. No, I guess not. Let's walk down here, and uh, let's turn around. Got a big old picture of Adolf Hitler on the wall right there. Not too uh, amusing. So, uh, oh, here we go. We've got one of his Nazi-looking guys right here. Kill all these... these uh, Soldiers that are trying to keep me in this hellhole. I mean, the whole concept of this game is to escape. Let's see if we can get the hell out of this place. And that's it. We already escaped. Got the kill ratio. So now, in a second, it's going to ask me if I want to save. I'm going to obviously say no because the save functionality is kind of weird. Not working. But that's fine with me because this is actually awesome. So yeah, this is uh somehow Wolfenstein 3D on the Sega Genesis. I've I've heard of this actually existing. Never actually seen this game actually working on real hardware. This is uh, this is playing on real hardware right here. And uh, it's, it works very, very well, as you can see. And uh, I am very, very in awe by the sight of Wolfenstein 3D playing on real Sega Genesis hardware. This is actually like a dream come true. It's actually pretty awesome. Look at this.
And uh, again, I I've came across this by accident on AliExpress. I will definitely pick up some other weird cartridges I find. See what the hell they do. Now this is definitely a unusual surprise, and it actually works quite nice. I think I heard a dog, and there it is. And all the graphics and everything looks really good. Look at this. Usually I don't do videos at night after I come home from work. You see I'm in my pajamas and I'm all kind of tired. But I received the package in the mail, a little small Chinese package. And I'm like, what the hell is this? I kind of forgot that I ordered that. And when I opened it, I was like, oh yeah. I gotta make a video on this. This is freaking awesome. Look at this. And here I am trying it out, and uh, pretty awesome. I will probably make more videos on this. I mean, I don't see why not. This is actually, if you guys want to see another video on this, uh, let me know down below. Now, let me know if you like our shelving lights that we added. Added a little bit of color there, makes it look a little nicer. So, yeah, this is pretty awesome. And again, I'm speechless how cool this is. This is actually really cool. So if you enjoyed this episode of Memory Lane, don't forget to give a thumbs up and comment down below. And let me know if you want to see more weird strange Sega Genesis or any weird thing that I find that's homebrew that's definitely not normal. Uh, strange cartridges that shouldn't exist but they do. If you want to see more of that, uh, comment down below and uh, let me know what you think about this. This personally seriously blows my mind and I love it. I think this is really really cool to play Wolfstein 3D on the Sega Genesis. I mean, look at this. We're going to be playing Wario Land 3 for the Sega Genesis, which I can't even comprehend how that even uh, happened. But there is a Wario game on the Sega Genesis. I mean, what the hell is this? And you see Wario right there. Look at that. There's like a little crab standing next to him, and he looks like he's pissed off. And he's on some sort of ship or something. And there, there is a web address down here. It says RetroGamingLife.com or something like that. So yeah, this is a weird homebrew or bootleg warrior game on the uh, Sega Genesis. And as you saw within our previous videos, we had a couple of Mario games. To be exact, let's... Uh, I'll grab those Mario games real quick. We have Mario 2 and Mario 3 and, and uh, occasionally, you know, with these games, we don't have good luck playing these games. It seems like these games are kind of, you know, they're sloppy and they sometimes they brick the hardware. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be checking out Mario Land 3. Now don't forget to subscribe and comment down below what you think of this game and definitely subscribe because I have more weird cartridges coming that we can try out and make memory lane episodes out of so stay tuned for more of these weird bootleg cartridges and uh, much like any other bootleg cartridge that you order off of AliExpress we have the 16-bit bootleg cartridge and uh, this one has different writing on the back what the hell is this it says, warning, do not bend it, crush it, or submerge it. Any liquids, do not bend, direct. Okay. It looks like on the bottom they kind of messed up there. But, if you look at the back of these, they actually have a lot of misspellings, and it looks a little different on the back. That's weird. They feel about the same. They feel cheap. So yeah, let's head over to the Sega Genesis and let's try out this Wario Land 3, this really bizarre Wario game, and uh, let's see exactly what we get. Alright, so here we have our Sega Genesis with the 6 button controller, and you can see that we've been busy playing a lot of Sega Genesis games here. So we're going to put our 
Wario Land game in here. Uh, let's head over to the CRT and let's explore how crazy this game is, because the last two were pretty crazy. Alright, so here we are playing another weird bootleg cartridge for the Sega Genesis, Wario Land 3. Now, what, what exactly do we have here? Let's, uh, let's find out. I have never seen this before, never even heard of it. We've got Wario Land 3. This is a weird... And we even have a little introduction here. Holy crap, what is this? This, is, this looks a bit fancy. Now that looks like Sonic the Hedgehog 3 right there for a second. Wow, this is pretty elaborate for a, for a bootleg cartridge. I'm actually impressed so far. So these are the, uh, the guys that made this bootleg cartridge possible. Wario Land 3. We got Start, Option, and Junior. I have no idea what... We'll see what's an option. Let's go check it out. We have our controls. We have a password option right there. Cool looking title screen. Okay, we got the beach. Alright, so we're about to play Wario. Look how he walks! What the hell is going on here? Are you kidding me? It's like little teeny legs. What happened to Wario's legs? What is that? We, is this like a ROM hack or something? He almost looks like one of those lemon characters. So you can pick up objects. The animation looks really good. Look how he jumps. Well done. Leave level completed. Item bonus. None. Okay. So it's Junior like a easy, easier version of the game, or let's see here. So we've got stuff a coin. So now we're uh, moving to the next level. Oh, the bird killed me! But I got myself a gun. It's hilarious seeing Wario with a gun. I'm not sure if in the uh, any of the uh, Nintendo versions, I, I don't remember him having a gun. What's down here? We got the hook. <laughs> Look how he holds it. He holds it up like that. That's pretty funny. Let's see if we walk down here. wonder if these barrels blow up. Nope. It's like a, a musket gun, like an actual handheld musket gun. Usually musket guns are really, really long, like a shotgun. You have to build them up. Oh, 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 oh! Alright, we made it to the next level. Let's see what we got here. What the hell is this place? All right, this place looks uh, quite a bit different. Okay, the music is pretty crazy. I guess we have 
There's something right here. I'm not sure if this is an object that, that's used to help us out. I threw it and it's bouncing over the place. What the hell? Get over here. It looks like Wario has glasses on or something. What the hell is that? You know, whatever those things are, they killed me. They look like green tomatoes or pumpkins. And it looks like I'm going to have to put my glasses back on. Oh! And I didn't... Oh, no! And we got ourselves a game over, so that is it. That's Wario Land 3 on the Sega Genesis. That's actually pretty fun. If you guys want to see more crazy like cartridges on the Sega Genesis, don't forget to comment down below and let me know what you think. And if you're new to this channel, subscribe. We're going to be checking out the unthinkable, unimaginable Super Mario 3 on the Sega Genesis. I mean, who would ever even think that this would be even a real thing? I mean, look at this. This is Super Mario 3 on a Sega Genesis. How is this even possible? And uh, the label actually looks really good. Whoever made this label, kudos to that person. Because actually the print quality is actually really nice. It's not bad at all. And uh, it looks really nice. They have the little Sega seal quality right there. You got the Sega logo down here. So uh, yeah. We got these 16-bit uh, bootleg cartridges. Anytime you see a cartridge with that on it, you automatically know this is a bootleg. And this is a void, and it's completely misspelled. Exposing cartridge to extreme temperature. Be careful not to immerse cartridge in water. For protection, when cartridge is not in use, place cartridge inside protective plastic case. Okay, so... Cheap plastic cartridges. The uh, label quality is actually quite nice. Uh, really, really good job to whoever did it. And of course, your typical labels. These these labels, they always peel like upwards at the end. So you have to like continuously push them back down. But the print quality is really nice. So whoever did that, good job. That's actually really nice. So how the hell do you get Super Mario 3 on a Sega Genesis. I'm very curious to go check this out. I'd, I've never even seen a ROM hack of this before. I mean, what is this? This is bizarre. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to the Sega Genesis and we're gonna put this in and I guess we're gonna be playing Super Mario 3 on the Sega Genesis. What, what the hell is this? Let's go find out. Alright, so we have our Sega Genesis right there with our 32X plugged in on the top of it, that big huge Power Power Mushroom. We got our copy of Super Mario 3 for the Sega Genesis. I never even thought I would even see such a thing. So let's put that in there. And now uh, let's head over to the CRT and let's play Super Mario 3 on the Sega Genesis. I never thought I would even say such a thing. Let's get uh, excited here. We're gonna be playing Super Mario 3 on the uh, Sega Genesis. What the hell is this? Looks like we have uh, some Russian, some Russian uh, illustration here. Some writing. I wish I could tell you what that says, but I can't. I don't speak Russian. And it looks like uh, Toad and uh, Mario are having a bit of a discussion. Toad is crying. He's having a fit, and. Uh, we have a Super Mario, this is Mario 3, something, 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 and I have no idea what the hell I am playing. This is really weird. This is a Russian version of Super Mario 3? What the hell? Let's uh, start the game. What the hell is that? That's weird. That's the most worst illustration of Mario I've ever seen. 
Okay, this is definitely not what I was expecting. I thought this was going to be an actual copy of Super Mario 3 for the sake of Genesis, but this is not what I was expecting here. This is weird. What the hell? This is strange. And the music's like a ridiculous like techno music. Okay. Is this game like a broken ass game or what? I tried to go down that tunnel and it froze. Let's try that again. That is the worst Super Mario illustration I've ever seen in my life. I mean, what the hell? Who made that? This is weird. Alright, so the last time we tried to go down that tunnel, it froze. So now we're exploring parts unknown here. We really don't know what the hell this game is. What's to deal with this game? This is a weird game. I mean, we're literally seeing Super Mario on a Sega Genesis, which is really weird in itself. But this game, apparently, is some weird rushing game. Okay, so you can you can definitely run. The controls are really weird. Sound effects are weird. Alright, so how the hell do you... Oh my god. This game is... Now the last time I tried to go down a tunnel, the game froze. Okay, this time it didn't. What the hell? So wait a minute, this time he went down the tunnel and then the game froze. What the hell is that? Wow, this game is a piece of crap. My Sega Genesis does not like this game at all. So apparently you can go down that tunnel. Is it me or did the music change? That music sounds different from the last time. And then there we go, the game uh, first again. This game is definitely uh, not what I was expecting. I thought I was going to be playing Super Mario 3, the real game, on the Sega Genesis. But this ended up being some weird Russian, bizarre Super Mario game that I've never seen before in my life. And it's really weird. And it, my Sega Genesis hates this game. In fact, it probably locked up and froze probably like five times during this video. So that is interesting. And uh, that, this is not going to be the only Super Mario game that we try out. So I have a couple more back here uh, that we're going to be trying out for the Sega Genesis. That apparently some weird stuff. So uh, stay tuned for more episodes of Memory Lane. And don't forget to subscribe and comment down below. It's pretty soon you're going to be seeing more bizarre, weird bootleg cartridges on the Sega Genesis. Weird stuff. So stay tuned. We're going to be checking out... Super Mario 2 for the Sega Genesis. Now that's right, if uh, Super Mario 3 wasn't good enough, let's check out Super Mario 2 and just in case you missed it, we did a video on this game a few days ago. If you missed it, definitely go on the channel and check it out. So now we have Super Mario 2. That was definitely a bizarre version of Super Mario 3. So uh, I can only expect this to be even more bizarre. Super Mario 2. And uh, once again, we have our bootleg Sega Genesis AliExpress cartridges right here. With uh, all the uh, misspellings. See a void at the very first word on the uh, caution is misspelled. And this is rated Kids to Adults, K to A. And uh, we have a, an official Sega seal of quality, which I, I highly doubt that's a thing for this game right here, so yeah, let's head over to the Sega Genesis and let's play Super Mario 2, but first 
take a look at this uh, label art right here. It looks like Mario is having a uh, good old time. Uh, there's nothing really much to see here except for Mario. So let's head over to the Sega Genesis and uh, let's see what this is all about. All right, so we have our Sega Mega Drive, Sega Genesis, whatever you want to call it, right here. We've got our Super Mario cartridge right here, which is ridiculous. Let's pop it in and let's head over to the CRT and let's have some fun playing a bizarre Super Mario game. All right, so here we are playing Super Mario 2 on the Sega Genesis. I don't expect much from this game based on... Now that looks like Super Mario. That looks pretty good. Let's see what we got here. This is a little bit of a demonstration of what the game looks like. The audio sounds a little off. All right, let's try it out. We have our uh, little illustration of Mario right there. And the uh, jumping is like real fast. So this looks kind of like Super Mario 1. So you saw we right there we went down the tunnel. This is weird. This actually looks like a pretty good ROM hack. What the hell? So we, it, it plays fast. You can see right there. But this is li literally... It looks like Super Mario All-Stars. What the hell? <laughs> so the, the first... Super Mario game I played on here... It, it, I think it froze and it was weird. It's like some Russian Super Mario 3 game. And I thought it was Super Mario 3, but it wasn't. Let's we'll see how far we go here. This is actually pretty cool. Oh my god, you even have the firepower. It's really fast, though. Like, it... it And much like the uh, NES version of the game, you can actually cheat. Run straight across. It plays a lot faster, which is really weird. Oh my god. Are you able to go down these tunnels? Let's find out. So immediately you warp into another level right here. That's interesting. And it doesn't look like the same world as World 4. This is actually not a half bad Super Mario Homebrew ROM hack for the Sega Genesis. I'm actually quite impressed. If it was a little bit slow, slowed down a little bit, like the the gameplay is a little fast, like Mario jumps like like he's on crack. I like when you shoot the uh, the enemy; you stay like flatten. That's pretty funny. Oh my god, I almost hold down the hole. So far this is actually not bad. So 
here we are. We gotta jump over here. <laughs> you see, he's sliding down a pole. And he's like halfway off. It's pretty funny. And he's like in the ground right there. What the hell's going on? Well, we are in World Two, Level Two. And now we are swimming. Oh no, 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 I'm getting uh, violated by a jellyfish. Oh my god. Oh! That's the first time we died. What the hell? Let's go down here. Oh, oh the jellyfish is coming. This is so weird. Playing Super Mario on a Sega Genesis, and it actually plays pretty good. Let's see if we can run. Get out of here. Whoever created this, uh, this ROM right here, this homebrew Mario game, they probably, whoever created this probably did it years ago. Probably back in the 90s. Or early 2000s, my guess. Whoever did it did a pretty good job. Well, we can have run underneath the water? Is that... Oh! This is really weird seeing Super Mario on a Sega Genesis, but this... Whoever made this game executed it quite well. It's actually not bad. Now, uh, if you walk in between that second and third tunnel, you actually fall through the ground, so don't do that. I learned my lesson. I have no idea what the hell that was. But here we made it to the end. Yeah, look at that. And Mario went into the castle. He's doing pretty good right now. And he is in the ground. As you can see there, his feet are stuck in the ground. Alright, let's uh, move on to the next level here. It's that bastardly watered level I hate. The stupid jellyfish. It's a good thing that they don't have uh, dolphins in this game. Dolphins are probably the rapiest animal in the world. It's bad enough that I have jellyfish going after me. Oh! Oh, oh, oh no! What the hell? No, not again. Okay, so... It made me start over again. Damn it. So as you can see here, this is... Super Mario Bros. 2. On the Sega Genesis. Really weird. Somebody definitely made this game. And I must say that I actually think the game's not bad. I did not expect it to be this bad, or this good that is. My expectations were pretty low. And I must say that this game passed my expectations for a cheap bootleg AliExpress uh, homebrew Super Mario ROM cartridge for the Sega Genesis that should not even exist to begin with, but it does. Now on uh, the last Super Mario video that I actually made a video on, uh, there was a Russian viewer that commented down below that said that these games are quite common in Russia. So I'm not sure if he might actually might have played this game before, I'm not sure. But this one's actually not half bad. This one's actually okay. Oh. So... Yeah, what do, what do you guys think about this? Do you want to see more crazy bootleg cartridges on the Sega Genesis? I have more. I have more to, uh, to actually record. I have a lot more. So, I'm not going to tell you what I have. I'm going to give you guys a little surprise here, but uh, comment down below and let me know what you think. If you want to see more bootleg Sega Genesis cartridges, or even NES cartridges, uh, comment down below and let me know what you think. If you want to see more... That's it. I'm going to continue playing this madness right here, and uh, let's see if I can make it to World 3.
Super Donkey Kong Country 99 on the Sega Genesis, as you can see right here. It's another, <clears throat> excuse me, just getting over a, a cold or something. Uh, it's another one of those weird homebrew ROM hack games. You can see there it has that cheap cartridge, and we have a weird, sinister looking Sega logo that's kind of looking like a Nintendo logo, which it's definitely not a not something I would recommend doing because usually back in the 90s and 80s Sega and Nintendo fans had their own stuff going on and they quite often did not want anything to do with each other and uh, there we go we had the uh, sinister Nintendo Sega logo right there and this is called Fan Brew Games and the end label is kind of peeling off a little bit. The uh, the print quality of the uh, the label is kind of so-so. It's not not the greatest. You can see that there's like little lines going through the label right there. You can see there's like a bit of a gap right there where the label is stuck, and that is it. Super Donkey Kong Country '99. So. I guess this is Donkey Kong Country for the Sega Genesis. Let's head over to the Sega Genesis and let's try it out. Alright, so we have our Sega Genesis right over there. We're just going to pop in Donkey Kong Country 99 for the Sega Genesis. And let's see exactly what this game is all about. Never heard of it before, so let's uh, have some fun. Alright, here we are playing Donkey Kong 99. What the hell is this? Man, we got a lot of audio going on here. We need to uh, turn that down just a little bit. Much better. Alright, it looks like we're going to have a little demonstration of how this looks, anyway. It looks like Donkey Kong Country, ain't that something? That's weird. So somebody somehow made a uh, cheap... Actual... It looks like Donkey Kong Country in slow motion. What the hell was that? Alright, let's uh... Let's go play this and see exactly what we have here. So there's no ducking, no nothing like that. So let's... Okay, pick up the barrels. And when he throws the barrels, he, def he definitely looks a little different from the Super Nintendo version. And you can definitely run. You have to hold down the B button. And, uh, the graphics look okay. They're not bad. Just uh, the gameplay. It's definitely not nearly as good as the original version. I can tell you that right now. I mean, it's okay, I guess. Now, I think I killed myself. Now, this is an okay game. I mean, this actually functions in place. It doesn't freeze. We have ourselves some TNT. The music gets a little annoying. I mean, look at that. I don't know if the Super Nintendo version has that animation or not. Where his eyes pop out like that. If it does, uh, comment down below and let me know. Because I, I don't remember seeing that. 
jump over here. I'm technically, oh, no, no, no. Oh, oh no. All right, let's try to make it to the end. Most of these the ROM hack or homebrew games, there's very, very little levels in this game, probably. There's probably not that many levels at all. So the game is probably designed to be hard. Challenging. On purpose. Alright, let's uh, make it to the end here. You can see I almost died right there. Oh, you gotta be kidding me! That didn't kill him? Damn it. Now we're just gonna run forward and try to make it to the end. Let's see if we can do it. did it. And these guys right here, they throw like coconuts or something. Here, let's try if we can make it over here. Oh, 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 what the hell is that? I don't know what that is, but I'm gonna jump over that guy. I think we're making it to the end. Hooray, we beat one level at least. That was pretty challenging. That was not bad. I guess, what is this? The second level? Well, I just died, so <clears throat> they might have thrown me back on the first level again. Yeah, this looks identical to the first level. Or it might be just that uh, this game doesn't have another level in it at all. You just continuously play this one. Which may be the case, because that's how some of these weird ROM hacks are. Oh, that freaking bird with the whatever that is so that is Donkey Kong Country and the Sega Genesis it's known as Donkey Kong Country 99 it's weird and uh, it actually plays quite well and it's not bad but I, I don't think there's many levels at all maybe only one level but it's quite interesting so if you guys enjoyed that episode of Memory Lane and you want to see more weird stuff uh, don't forget to give that thumbs up and comment down below. Let me know what you think. Good old fashioned Super Mario Brothers for the Sega Genesis. What the hell? How the hell did this get on the Sega Genesis? Well, as you already saw, this is probably like one of the final weird ROM hack cartridges that I've actually uh, had a chance to play on the Sega Genesis, which I will probably pick up more. Let's go over the previous cartridges that I have reviewed within the past month or so. We have Super Mario World 64. We have a uh, Russian Super Mario game. And now just to give you guys an idea of all these weird stuff that I actually came across, let's uh, take a look at it real quick before we go any further. Donkey Kong Country 99. Super Mario World. Uh... <laughs> Super Mario Brothers 2, and there's Super Mario Ray 3rd, 
Wario Land 3, Pocket Monsters 2, which actually doesn't work at all. Super Mario 3, Duke Nukem for the uh, Sega Genesis, and uh, Wolfstein 3D, and I've made videos on all of these games, and this is the final game out of that batch of games right there that I uh, ordered, and I may order more games, who the hell knows, I mean, it's, a f it's fun to make videos on these. So if you guys want me to order a second batch of weird stuff, uh, comment down below and uh, let me know what you think, and I might order a second batch. So here we are, down to the final game of that specific batch of games that I've ordered, Super Mario Brothers, the original. And uh, let's look at the question, and just like, well actually they used real screws this time, how about that? That's a shocker. Nearly every single Genesis game has these cheap plastic weird looking screws. I mean, look at that. This one has real metal screws. So that's uh, definitely quite a bit different, unusual. Uh, the print label quality is not bad, it has a nice gloss to it. Uh, shockingly, the, oh, oh, well, I was going to say something nice about the end label, but forget about that. You see that it's sticking up a little bit. So your standard bootleg trait. As soon as you see that happening right there, that's uh, a good old sign that you have a bootleg game. So, uh, yeah, the image looks kind of crushed down a little bit. It doesn't look like, uh, you know, it's the, the appropriate ratio. And the uh, Sega Genesis logo kind of looks stretched out. So yeah, it's your normal uh, bootleg game right here. And we have Mario right here with a mushroom. And you got all the uh, the enemies running around acting crazy. You got all kinds of stuff going on here. Look at this, this is nuts. So uh, a lot of these uh, bootleg Mario games on the Sega Genesis are hit or miss. So we don't know for sure if this is gonna be good or bad. So uh, without any further ado, Let's head over to the Sega Genesis and let's find out exactly what we're getting ourselves into. And uh, that right there would be the location where the Sega Genesis resides. That's where it lives. Look at that. It's all hooked up, ready to be played. And uh, let's head over. Yeah, the 32X on top. Give it a little bit more power. And we're about to uh, insert Super Mario Brothers into the Sega Genesis. And we're about to play this bizarre game. I have no idea what we're gonna get, but let's head over to the CRT and let's find out. All right, so it's time to play some uh, Sega Genesis. And we're gonna be playing the original Super Mario Brothers. Super Mario World. And I have a feeling that this is probably the same exact thing that this cartridge is right here. Which is uh, Super Mario World for the uh, Sega Genesis. Which I made a video on this like last week or something like that. But it comes up saying Super Mario World. But it's actually Super Mario Brothers. Really weird stuff. <laughs> and uh, just in case you missed it. There's a game called Super Mario World 64 that's actually Super Mario World, and it's actually really good. This game is, I believe, the same exact thing as the game that I probably already uh, reviewed a few days ago, which last week probably, Super Mario World. So it's not Super Mario World at all, it's more like a weird Mario game where you pick up blocks. And you throw it, but apparently, if you go on to um, AliExpress, they have like multiple different names for this game because it's like a cheap, weird ROM hack that derived from either Russia or China. It's like one of those bootleg games, unlicensed contraband for the Sega Genesis, and. 
It plays quite well, but it's definitely not like your normal uh, Super Mario game. The controls are a bit kind of... It, it looks like Mario's on speed. He's walking quite fast. And you can see right there he's kind of hunchbacked. Just a little bit. You can see right there when he picks up the blocks, the blocks will quite... Oh my god! And there we go, we made it to the end! And uh, Mario can also pull a Solid Snake Metal Gear Solid trick. You can hide inside the box. You can look around and... Would it be cool if you could walk while inside the box? And yeah, let's see if we can make it further than what we did. Oh my god, what is that? Is that a flying turtle? So the, the game definitely appears to be like your normal Mario enemies and characters, but it definitely doesn't play normal. And I'm not, not, I'm not, oh my god. I'm not 100% sure what this game is trying to ROM hack, but I'm pretty sure there's already a game that exists. Now the last time I posted this video, on Super Mario World the last week, or the week before maybe, uh, someone mentioned the Chip and Dale's game on the NES, where you can actually hide it underneath the box. So it might possibly be some sort of ROM hack for that, I'm not sure. Now uh, let's uh, see if we can make it across. Oh, oh my god, that turtle got me right there. What the hell? Alright, we made it to the end of that level, and now we're in like a, a Bowser level right here. Uh, sometimes you don't have blocks to throw at these enemies, so you have to like jump over them and try to avoid it. And it's weird because you can jump through the uh, the ceiling. Like you can literally jump through the ceiling right there, just like no boundary. And you can throw it through the ground. So if you're standing right here, you can literally throw it sideways and and uh, th oh oh my god! Remember this? I remember this. Oh, fall down! Oh no! You have to hit Bowser with the blocks. All right, so let's see if we can throw a block at him. I mean, we're, he's almost dead, I would imagine. How many blocks do you have to hit him with? It's insane. Oh, oh my god. And there we go. See, the, the first time I played this game, it was, uh... I had a hard time beating him. But now that I already played it, like, the first time, it's it's the same game as Super Mario World, by the way. So this is, like, a second run at this game. But they, they're, they're actually calling it by its appropriate name this time. It's Super Mario Brothers on the NES. But it's nothing like Super Mario Brothers. It's completely different. It kind of looks like it graphically, but it's definitely uh not the same. All right, let's see if we can make it to the end of the level right here. It's actually not a bad game. And there we go. So now we're in an underground level over here. The graphics look pretty good. So that's one thing about this game that it has going for it. The graphics are actually quite nice. Whoa! Looks like some sort of uh, like a glitch. Oh yeah, I forgot. In this game, you can actually keep jumping. And you can just go right straight to the end. So if you keep doing this, fall down. That was something I discovered from the first time I played it. Completely forgot about that. You can probably do it over here too. Let's keep walking to the end right here. You have to keep pounding the jump button. 
And then you float straight down right there. It's like a little cheat. Alright, so it's walk to the end. Alright, so right here, unfortunately, you have to drop down and take out these turtles. And there we go. And we have Bowser once again. And Bowser is a scumbag. Look at this. Let's see if we can take him out. Oh, oh, I don't have any more fire power. My fire power ran out. So no more firepower. And I'm now in a frantic panic. I'm gonna have to rely on boxes, and those boxes only come down so oh 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 oh. Oh no! He is gonna hurt Mario, as you can see there. And he's pissed off. Oh no way. That was close. And he kind of runs around a slightly different than the last time. Pick up the box, Mario! And there we go, we beat him twice! We're doing pretty good this time around. And uh, we did not make it this far the last time. And uh, this is a nice, colorful looking level. It kind of, kind of reminds me of like Rayman or something. Looks pretty good. Look at this. What the hell is that? There was literally a box that had legs. That was really bizarre. And there is a... what appears to be like a Donkey Kong monkey looking creature that... in a barrel. It's really strange. Look at this. What the hell is that? Alright, so we don't have any... Oh, there's a box down here, actually. I think this is basically the equivalent of Mario taking a... eating a bad mushroom, and now he... this is basically the level he ended up at. You see some crazy big mushroom... Oh my god, what the hell is that thing? Is that like some sort of... bat? I don't remember ever seeing bats in Super Mario. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but... Oh, I died! I just walked right into a, like, no man's land right there. And uh, this level is definitely unfamiliar to me, like... Definitely something I don't remember. Look at this box! It has legs! What the hell is that? Some creepy stuff going on here. Got boxes with legs, and we got like some sort of special power here. I don't know what this is. Does it allow me to be immune to like all the enemies? No, I guess not. You have to be a little bit cautious over here. Oh, oh, that bat's going after me! Son of a. Here, let's get the box. Okay, these boxes are going to be our best friend right now. It's, uh, it's the only way that we're going to be able to take out these uh, these enemies. Oh, he hit me with a... Assumingly a banana or something. It's a really weird level. The level design... There's that box again. That's a creepy ass box. I mean, it has a pair of legs popping out of it. Alright, this so this power right here, whatever he has, actually allows him to be invisible. Which is quite nice. We can make it to the uh, the end right here. The controls on this game are a little tricky. It takes a little getting used to. All 
Alright, so far we're doing pretty well. That thing right there. Let's see if we can get down here for a second. Let's see if we just skip that enemy right there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're kind of close to the end. I wonder if we can actually jump. Oh, what is that? Oh, that actually works quite well. I forgot about that. Alright, so now where do we jump? That was such a large gap of a jump that it's kind of like impossible. Does he run? I don't think he runs. I think in this Mario game he runs at one single speed and that's it. And there's that box! Look at that thing! And he walked off the platform and it was levitating. What the hell? What's going on here? There wasn't no platform there for him to be walking on. I mean, that was, uh... Creepy. It's just a little bit. Let's see if we can get down here and, uh... Now over here, around this area, is where those bats come into play. You can see them now. Here, oh, there, oh, there, yeah. Look at that bat. Here comes another one. So the only way of killing this thing is to actually do. Oh, he still killed. He, he actually hit me. Son of a bitch. Oh, he broke my box. What the hell? Oh, I fell down the hole. This is not nearly as good as uh, Super Mario World 64 for the Sega Genesis, which is another weird bootleg. Oh, I forgot about that box. Yeah, Super Mario World 64 so far is the best Super Mario ROM hack that I've ever played on the Sega Genesis. Or bootleg game, if you want to call it. Uh, this game right here, it's pretty fun. But it's nowhere near as good as uh, Mario World 64. This game is challenging. Oh, you son of a bitch! I can just imagine like somebody like the uh, the angry video game they're they're trying to play these games. Someone should uh, make that a suggestion to him. Play all these bootleg uh, ROM hack. Like, do a special episode on that. That'd be pretty, pretty interesting. And, uh, let's, uh... Oh, oh, get, oh! I guess that's supposed to be, like... Donkey Kong, or... Donkey Kong Jr.? I have no idea. <laughs> Make it to the end right here, and there's that stupid bat. Oh! And we made it past those bats. All right, so far we're in the uh, okay shape. And we might be able to make it past that guy right there, except he actually hit me. Alright, so if we make it over here... Yeah! We made it to the end! Wow. That was crazy. Now, how the hell are you supposed to jump there and not get hit? That doesn't make any sense. So we got some sort of green... What the hell is that? Is that a snake? Well, the snake is pretty easy, I guess. He doesn't really do anything. Except for he tries to bite you in the wrong direction. The f and then, of course, we have this, like, scary-looking chiller 
NES-style torture chamber with the scary music. You can hear it. And there we go, Mario and Luigi died. And now that is, uh... Super Mario Brothers for the Sega Genesis, a bootleg Mario game, which is the same thing as Super Mario World on Sega Genesis as well. It's the same exact thing. So those two cartridges have identical games. Like, it's basically the same thing. The game is pretty fun. Not bad. Uh, but I still recommend Super Mario World 64 for Sega Genesis. I think that game is actually pretty good. This one is... It's okay. It says it's playable. It's not bad. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode of Memory Lane, and if you want to see more weird ROM hack videos and things that you've never seen before, comment down below and let me know what you think. Give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you ever encountered anything out in the wild, strange ROM hacks, let me know down below. Because I remember somebody mentioning Super Mario World 64, and I just happened to not film it yet, but I have it right here. So if you guys ever seen anything else strange out there, just let me know. Alright, what happens when we take Streets of Rage and the Ninja Turtles and combine it together? Oh yeah! It's time to play some Ninja Turtles Streets of Rage. Alright, here we are playing the Sega Genesis once again, as you can see here. And we're uh, showing off some more crazy ROM hacks in uh, bootleg games. What, what, what do we have here? We got another Streets of Rage ROM hack. Let's find out what this is here. And you can see right there on the bottom left hand side, we got the Ninja Turtles. Alright. So let's pick the uh, turtle. So this is a Ninja Turtles ROM hack for Streets of Rage. I mean, look at this. This is pretty cool. Yeah, take that, you son of a bitch. Uh, there, there is a, quite a few Ninja Turtles beat em up games, but why not add them to the Streets of Rage? I mean, look at this. It's only fitting. The Ninja Turtles beating up a bunch of uh, thugs. I mean, look at that. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Alright, let's go down here and see who we're beating up. Oh, yeah, take that, you son of a bitch. And it looks pretty good. I mean, my favorite Turtles beat em up is uh, the third one on the NES. It's definitely uh, one of my favorites. Oh, he tossed me like a piece of crap. Alright, let's see if we can... Oh, yeah, look at that. So what happens when you pick up a, a weapon here? Oh, he, he definitely uses the weapon. Check that out. I mean, he, he has two daggers. Like swords. Look at that. Oh. Stab him. Got a pipe right here. You use the uh, pipe. And this is an exclusive portion of this video right here. Oh, he stabbed me right there. Son of a bitch. If you guys want to see more memory memory lane uh, episode packs, uh, let me know down below because. Uh, I can definitely compile a bunch of cool stuff together and just make one huge pack. Uh, this is a very, very entertaining episode of Memory Lane. Based on the uh, Sega Genesis. And if you guys missed the, uh, uh, the Atari packs, don't forget to watch those. There's a lot of cool stuff if you uh, enjoy some really old school video games. And uh, you never know what you're going to find online, because I'll tell you what, there's a lot of weird ROM hack bootleg games for the Sega Genesis. It's more common now than it ever was before. I mean, the unlicensed games originated down in, like, Brazil. But now, if you go onto, like, eBay or pretty much anywhere, you're going to find all kinds of crazy weird ROM hacks. And, uh, you never know what you're going to find, really. It's, there's always, like, different things popping up. Always a lot of weird bootleg games being made, ROM hacks left and right, and it's so popular now that it's 
pretty much keeping the Sega Genesis still alive and well. You know, even after all the great games that came out on the Sega Genesis. So if you enjoyed this uh, exclusive memory lane episode on Gaming Plus Empire, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment down below. Let me know if you want to see more special episodes of Memory Lane. Here we're playing the Sega Genesis Echo of the Dolphin. Now, in today's episode of Memory Lane, we're going to be showing off my Sega Genesis collection. Now, we're going to be starting off with Sega Genesis controllers. So, let's start off with this bizarre looking controller right here. We have a Sega Genesis Striker. And I picked this up with a gaming lot, and you see that the uh, the cable is a little frail, but it still works. And uh, this controller is made in Taiwan. Let's see if you can get a close shot of that. And the buttons are very colorful. You have neon yellow, blue, magenta, green. You have all the rapid turbo fires here, which by now they're kind of like seized up. So they're hard to actually maneuver. The start button's right there in the center, and this one has a uh, stereo jack on the bottom. So, interestingly enough, this was designed for the Model 1 Genesis. And at the bottom of the, of the, uh, the controller, you have a uh, headphone jack and the Genesis plug-in right there. Which is, let's see here, nine prongs. So, you have to plug both of those in and use the controller right here. And uh, on a future episode, I might actually try this out. It's actually very comfortable to hold. And the main, the main reason why it's comfortable to hold is it has these weird grips on the back where you place your fingers. And it actually feels pretty good. Strangely enough, if you hold it backwards like that, it actually feels really even better. Somebody should des design a controller like that, with all the buttons on this side. Then of course we have one of our six button joystick, joy pads right here. Probably one of the best controllers ever made. A six button Sega Genesis controller. And as you already know, there is a classic Sega Genesis console coming out. Very soon, within the next week or so, it has plenty of good games on it. It already has outstanding reviews by people who have gotten their hands on it. And I personally have seen the box and the controllers in person. And I got a chance to actually pick up the actual box of the Sega Genesis Mini, and it's pretty heavy. Now that's my air conditioner. Let's turn that off for a second. And we have this controller right here called Dox. And uh, this controller has seen better days as you, you can see here. The uh, casing that goes around the wires has definitely uh, seen better days. I mean, look at that. Got a whole bunch of uh, colorful looking cables right there. And uh, this has your turbo buttons right here. There is no switches or anything like that. You just push your turbo buttons. A, B, and C, your direction pad there, your start button there. It's pretty much the same exact shape as your normal standard Genesis controller. And on the back, you have a switch. And that switch turns your turbo on and off, or actually it does for slow. So I guess if you put the slow on, what it does is it pauses rapidly real quick while you play the game. And it's also made in China, which is not a big surprise. And of course we have our Sega Genesis 
Mega Fire controller over right here. Now I think that this is not a third party controller. It looks like an actual real Sega Genesis, Sega branded controller. It's not that common of a controller at all. It's model number 1657 Sega. So it's definitely a real Sega, Sega controller. And as you can see here, you see how this looks on the camera for a second. Yeah, it looks okay. So as you can see here, it has your turbo functionalities on the controller right here. So this is a real branded Sega controller with turbo. And I've had this controller for a long time. I probably still works fine. There's really nothing wrong with the actual cable itself. It looks like it's in good shape. And of course we have another six button controller. I usually use the six button controllers. More six button controllers right here. They're a little dusty. Need to be cleaned off a little bit, but I believe that both of these six button controllers are the same exact models. 1653, 1653, so they are the same exact controller. One of them has a mode button that doesn't work right. See the mode button's on top. That switches between six button to three button. So there is a handful of games that does not like the six button controller. So just so you guys know, if you collect for Sega Genesis and you have a six button controller, not all games are compatible. And the rest of the controllers that are in here are Sega Saturn controllers. And of course we have our Japanese Sega Saturn controller right there. Now I have, as far as the console goes, I have it over there. The console, I will take a separate video, which you'll probably see it right now, is these Model 1 Sega Genesis with a 32X. And the uh, 32X works perfectly fine. And the audio is piped out of the auxiliary port in the front. And uh, it's in pretty good shape. Every once in a while it does collect dust, so I have to wipe it off and everything. But let's check out the first batch of Sega Genesis games I have here. Looks like we have Alien Storm. And Alien Storm. Got the cartridge right there. Now, not all games I have manuals for, but I try to get the cases at least. And the Alien Storm is a nice side scrolling shooter action game. And check that out. Uh, this game might be on the, uh, the Classic. If you're getting the Sega Genesis Classic mini console, it's worth it because if you switch it from English to Japanese, you unveil a whole bunch of different library games from Japan. So, not only do you have American games, but you can switch it to Mega Drive games too. Which is a little less unknown fact about the Sega Genesis Mini. We've got Cyborg Justice. This is another uh, interesting beat em up here. And I love the uh, box art of the Sega Genesis, or the label art. Kind of reminds me of something you would see on the Atari 2600. Some crazy robot looking stuff. And of course we have Alter Beast. And we got the manual and everything right there, the cartridge, all that stuff. And Alter Beast has the uh, the wolf beast looking creature right there on the front. We got the uh, Alter Beast spine label and screenshots on the back. I don't have a whole lot of Sega Genesis games, but I have enough. I have a pretty decent collection of Gunstar Heroes. For some reason I have a Vander Holyfield box and I actually never played this game before. But I, I guess when I got the Genesis this probably came with it. Never cared to play it but got a Vander Holyfield right there with all its belts and that looks pretty cool. This will be a nice game to get signed by a Vander Holyfield. Get it like an autograph, that'd be pretty awesome. And we have Comic Zone. And now this is where Sega kind of skimped out on 
casing because they used to have plastic cases and then they switched to cardboard. You can see cardboard cases don't hold up that well. It's the reason why most NES games don't have their cases. So back when the Sega Genesis was kind of around 95 or 96, they switched to cardboard. And uh, in order to open this up, you had to like slide this box out, I believe. And uh, that's how the comic zone looks. You had the manual, and you have everything right there. And that's basically what holds the game right there. And there is a bonus. According to this, which I don't think is in here, there is a bonus CD that has a, uh, a soundtrack of some sort. And uh, that is long gone. So that, that CD is not in here, just so you guys know. But if you do have a copy of Comic Zone with the CD, most more than likely it's probably worth a lot more than what this one is. This is just a basic boxed copy of Comic Zone. The only thing I care about is playing the game. And that's pretty much why I have the game. It's definitely pretty cool. Now we also have Ghouls and Ghost for the Sega Genesis. Definitely one of my favorite series. I also have the uh, Super Nintendo version, Super Ghouls and Ghosts, or Ghosts and Goblins, whatever the hell it's called. And uh, the label art, the box art, looks really, really awesome. Look at that, it's one of my favorites. And of course we have Golden Axe 1 and 2. Definitely a must-have if you have Sega Genesis. And, uh, this one happens to be the Sega Classic Edition. So you can think of this as like the greatest hits from like the PlayStation. This is the equivalent of that. So long before the greatest hits, Sega had Sega Classics. And then we had Golden Axe 2 right here. A great sequel to uh, this game right here. Nice, awesome uh, medieval looking beat em up game. And over here we have Kid Chameleon, another very, very good, interesting uh, side scroller. And uh, for some reason, my copy of Kid Chameleon, I just noticed this now, but on the back it's actually missing the barcode. That's interesting. It looks like somebody like cut out the whole barcode back there. That is really weird. You got the cartridge in there and everything. That is bizarre. I know they back back in the day they used to have the proof of purchase. I wonder what the background story is on that. And then of course you have Poacher Poacher Guys to Poacher Guy. Haunting Haunting versus Poacher. Starring Poacher Guy. Okay, let's say that again. Haunting Storm Polter Guy. This is an electronic arts game. And it's a very, very interesting scary game, I guess. You control like a ghost and you have to go around and interact with different objects and scare the crap out of the family. And it kind of looks like The Sims almost kinda on the back. And they're very, very proud that it was a 16-bit game as you can see there, 16-bit. And uh, the, the case on this is much more thicker than a standard Sega Genesis case. Well, it's definitely a lot different looking. And now uh, these AEA cartridges had a different look. So if you look at the cartridge right here, they had that weird yellow thing right there on the top and the cartridges the cartridges were a lot bigger and if you look at that it's pretty interesting I remember having a few EA games back in the day and I always thought that was like a button you push like it looks like a button let's take a look at that I always thought that this part was a button a poacher guy right there what a great game 
If you guys never played this, you have to check it out. Of course, these cases were a lot more sturdy. Uh, the mechanism that held the cartridge in right here was not the greatest, but you can see behind the cartridge, you had Electronic Arts emblem right there. The old EA logo. It's a big case, and it will definitely protect your game, but it's a lot more flimsy. And then we have Land Stalker. It's another interesting Sega Genesis game. And you got this Land Stalker spine label. I guess this you could probably consider it like an RPG type thing. Let's see if we can open up the case right here. We got Land Stalker. I don't have the manual for it, so I will have to track that down. And then we have uh, Mercs for the Sega Genesis, and this is kind of like something you would see out of like the Neo Geo. It's like a top-down shooter Contra type thing. If you like Contra, you might actually enjoy playing this. Now, as far as I know, it's exclusive to the Sega Genesis. And it says it's made by a program by Capcom also. So that's interesting. You see a couple of screenshots on the back right there. Then we have Marvel Land. This is another one of those crazy, interesting side-scroller taboo games that you might as well consider a hidden gem. It's definitely made by Cap uh, Namco, that is, not Capcom. You know, it's definitely not, it's a quite the unusual game. But it's worth picking up if you're collecting Sega Genesis games. It looks pretty good. Got the cartridge in there. You know, we got some more games to go. We have Outrun 2019. So definitely a pretty awesome racer on the Sega Genesis. I definitely enjoy playing this. You can see on the back some screenshots. It's a futuristic ver version of uh, Outrun. We got uh, Miss Pac-Man. Now, Miss Pac-Man is definitely a pretty decent Pac-Man port. It's actually pretty good. Not bad at all. So if you enjoy playing Pac-Man, more than likely you'll enjoy playing this. And then of course you have... You cannot have a Sega Genesis collection without having Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. Michael Jackson's Moonwalker is a great game. Uh, interesting side-scroller. Excuse me. You see some screenshots right there on the back. And uh, definitely, hands down, probably my favorite label art on the Sega Genesis. Has definitely that craziest Hario looking label art with the rainbow and uh, some crazy collages going on there. Definitely reminiscent to something you'll see on the 2600 shirt. And we have more to go. Now, try to keep these in alphabetical order just so you guys know. We're about halfway through. We got Ranger X. This is like a run and gun -um type deal with a Beck robot. And you can see right there, there's a couple of screenshots at the back that look pretty cool. You can see the cartridge right there. And uh, this actually still has a UPC label on the back for $49.95, so that, I don't know what store that is, but that's how much it was sold for back in the day, $49.95, this game goes, goes for a lot of money now, I feel congested for some reason, am I allergic to Sega Genesis, maybe, I don't know, we got the uh, Prince of Persia game right here, a Tenjin game, so Tenjin's basically Atari, and uh, this is definitely, uh, is a Prince of Persia cartridge right there. I actually printed the, the actual label out 
So this whole spine label and everything right here, the, the whole label that's around this box is printed out. Uh, I cut the label, printed it out, and I put it inside the case myself. So I had a few extra cases. Uh, this cartridge in particular, I had it loose at one time. So I just created my own label. We have Fantasy Star 3. And of course this is a role playing game. I'm not big into role playing games, but I do have this game. I heard it's really good. Got the cartridge right there. I always have a handful of role playing games in my collection. <coughs> even though I don't play them. Now here's a really nice hidden gem. Subterranean. So Subterranea, Subterranea that is. So you can see right there, kind of a really obscure shooter that not too many people have heard of. But I tell you what, it's actually really good and it has really good graphics. And it's something that I think is only on Sega Genesis. So this operates only with NTSC televisions. It's Genesis and Sega CD systems purchased in North America and South America, except for Argentina, Paraguay, and Uruguay. What the hell? Oh, that game is pretty awesome. If you guys want a good shooter, check this out. And definitely one of my favorites right here, Saturday Night Slam Masters. And uh, Sega Genesis version of this game it features an exclusive barbed wire deathmatch with explosions and actually I don't know if it has explosions or not I'm probably thinking of uh, Fire Pro Wrestling but it does have the Bob Wire Mash and that's something that the Super Nintendo version does not have uh, this this version also for some reason is missing the referee so unlike the Super Nintendo version the referees walking around in the match this version doesn't have that the referee just does not want to be in between you and the computer guy or you and your friend when you're battling on the Sega Genesis, because it's a lot more barbaric. And we have the Rocket Knight Adventures for the Sega Genesis, another great side scroller. And uh, this game is definitely quite the well known game on the Sega Genesis made by Konami. And it says, Order your official Sparkster t shirt details inside. So there is no details inside anymore, as you can see. The, uh, the manual is probably long gone. When I started collecting Sega Genesis games, I pretty much hit up eBay, and whatever I can get inside the boxes I grabbed before the prices went up. So nowadays, the prices that I paid on those games probably are like twice the amount now. So let's check out another batch of Sega Genesis games. We have a favorite of mine, Sonic Spinball. I know that Sonic Spinball is definitely not everybody's favorite, but I liked the game. I thought it was pretty good. And this is complete. It's not really that hard to find this game complete with the manual and everything, so this one has everything with it. And another great fighting game on the Sega Genesis right here. We got Super Street Fighter 2. And uh, this game is definitely really, really good on the Genesis, especially with the six button controller. And they get a nice description on the back of what this game is all about. And this is an exclusive Street Fighter 6 button pad offer inside. So according to this, if you go to inside the manual, let's just check that out real quick. The manual is in pretty bad shape. So it says that this special deal expires January 30th, 1995. So Unfortunately, we're like 14, almost 15 years too late. Somewhere in here, there's an offer for the six blanket controller. And I'm not seeing it here. But, more than likely, someone probably used that special offer. You have a little diagram of the six blanket controller right there. 
I find that to be really strange. There's like some sort of ring on this manual. Maybe this was like a rental copy or something. Maybe they had it hanging up and they just put it inside the case. That's really weird. I have never seen that before. So there is no special offer in here anymore. More than likely it's like one of those cards. So let's get this, let's insert it back inside the case, close it up. And we have Super Hang On for the Sega Genesis. Now, I personally enjoy Hang On on the Sega Master System a lot. I played that game quite a bit back in the day. This one I didn't play nearly as much, but the uh, Sega Master System version I played a lot. Alright, so these are the pretty much the obvious ones for here. We have Sonic the Hedgehog 1, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 right there, and Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Got all three of them right here. And that they're probably all complete too. They all have their manuals. So everything is pretty much good. Good shape. They all play. And of course, we have Sonic 3D Blast, and this is a rare exception of having like a box game that's in really, really good shape. I mean, this one's not bad, not scratched or no, nothing wrong with it. Look at that. It's in really, really good shape. Then we have Sonic and Knuckles, another interestingly, uh, pretty decently good shape game. And uh, just in case you guys have never seen what the cartridge looks like. Probably one of the most weirdest looking cartridges of all time. Because that's what it looks like right there. You have to plug Sonic 1, 2, or 3 into this, and then you get like additional levels and all kinds of crazy stuff, features, and everything. It says play Sonic and Knuckles or connect with uh, a Sonic game. It's like lock, lock on technology. A new technology, lock on. Well, I could have sworn that Lock On Technology was invented by Game Shark or Game Genie. I mean, <laughs> I think Game Genie did it first. All right, let's get these back so they don't get messed up. Now, of course, we have a, a few more over right here. We got the. Shining in the Darkness for the Sega Genesis. And this is like a bit of an RPG game. And this is another label that I printed out. Because I originally just had the cartridge. And you see the cartridge is a little beat up. But this is one of those games that kind of goes for a lot of money. So I just had a spirit box laying around and I printed out the label. Inserted the label myself and kept it inside of a box. And of course, this is another obvious must-have for the Sega Genesis. Streets of Rage 1, Streets of Rage 2, and of course, Streets of Rage 3. Most people prefer to have the second one. I personally like all three of them. There's no discrimination on uh, Streets of Rage games here. I definitely enjoy playing all of them here. And uh, the second one is complete. And it's not for resale, as you can see there, it's not for resale copy. And then we got the third one right here. The third one is not complete, so the first and the third are not complete, but the second one is. And of course we have a Street Fighter 2 Special Championship Edition. So this is like one of the older Street Fighter 2 copies, I guess. Uh, before they came out with the six button controller one. Then of course we have Samurai Showdown, made by Sakara. SNK, 
It was reprogrammed by Takara for the Genesis. Now Takara is definitely one of my favorite 16-bit programmers because they actually made a lot of good fighting games, or they ported a lot of good fighting games over to the Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo that originally were on Neo Geo. So they pretty much saved you probably $500 so you don't have to go out and buy a Neo Geo AES console. And uh, buying the games on the Neo Geo are very expensive, they're like hundreds of dollars. So instead of buying the console and the cartridge, you can just buy the game on whatever console you have. And they were pretty good. And of course we have the... And... Let's make sure it's recording. And of course we have the Ninja Turtles game right here, Tournament Fighters. And uh, this basically plays out just like Street Fighter. A nice Konami hidden gem on the Sega Genesis. And we got a few more to go. And we have the Echo game right now that's actually playing on the TV right here. Empty Box is actually playing right now as we speak. Echoes the Tides of Time. And then we have Last Crusader, and this is another game that I originally did not have the box for. And you can see that this is, appears to be like one of those third party boxes that more than likely you would find at like a Funko Land or someplace. Because it was designed to fit both regular standard cartridges and EA big fat cartridges. And I printed the label out myself and inserted it myself. It's definitely not the greatest quality, but it gets the job done. And then we have NBA Jam. Another great Sega Genesis game. I remember playing the crap out of this game. This is actually the NBA Jam Tournament Edition. Now uh, this is another label that I printed out and inserted it myself as well, just so I can have it inside of a box. You can tell the difference. It's when I printed out on my Canon, the colors are a little bit more dull than the actual real Sega Genesis prints, as you, you can see there. This is Arcade Classics, which I actually uploaded a video on this a few days ago. This is Centipede, Missile Command, Pong, and all Atari games, but interestingly enough, they don't even have the Atari logo or nothing on here. They do mention Atari on the copyrights, but there's no Atari logo at all. Which kind of pisses me off, because I personally like Atari, but at least you can play some Atari games on your Sega Genesis. And this is in pretty good shape. It has all the manuals and everything. And then we have Wiz and Liz, another crazy hidden gem, like a little platformer game. It's very, very colorful, nice, interesting looking platformer, interesting looking label art. It's quite the unusual game. You have to run around and try to catch all these uh, creatures, I believe rabbits. I haven't played this in a long time. Maybe this is something that we should check out in the future. Have the uh, this is complete too. We have the manual and the cartridge. So now we have a few not so complete games. I'll we'll put these back first. All right. So first thing on the list right here for not completed is the uh, Game Genie, and the Game Genie works perfectly fine. I use this to play. Japanese games. So that's basically what it's used for. Not only that, we can also add different weird cheat codes and all that stuff. Then I have this thing. Now this is supposed to let you play Japanese games, but I never could get it working. This is called a Honey Bee. It's a really weird looking cartridge. These are not easy to get hold of. It's a gold cartridge and you're supposed to be able to insert a Mega Drive game on top, just like that, and then insert this down inside your Genesis and be able to play a Japanese game. 
without anything crazy going on here. Let's see if we can remove that without. So I never ever could get this working right. It, it, it recognizes the game and whatnot, but for some reason it just doesn't bypass the region lock. So I own it, but it's useless to me. So we'll put that back in the box. And again, that's it called a Honeybee SG300. And I guess this was quite the popular thing back in the day. And I only have two Mega Drive games at the moment. I have, of course, Golden X3, which is very, very expensive to get hold of in a box, which is the reason why I don't have a box copy of it. And of course, I have the sumo wrestling game that's exclusive to the uh, Mega Drive over in Japan. And it's quite the interesting sumo wrestling game. And I don't off the head. I really don't know how to pronounce that. If you can see that, you take a guess and uh, try to translate that. But it's definitely a, an exclusive over in Japan, as, as you can see. It would have been cool if they ported this to uh, North America or Europe. And of course, uh, Golden Axe 3, definitely the best Golden Axe. Uh, definitely a great game. I believe that it was only playable in the US on the Sega channel, the uh, internet access service. Uh, you were able to play this and stream it online, but there, there was never a cartridge form of this game over in North America, which sucks, but uh, you can still play it if you get the uh, Game Genie. So, that's pretty much my Sega Genesis collection. Uh, great console. If you guys currently don't have a Sega Genesis, I strongly recommend getting the Sega Genesis Mini. Plenty of good games on it. There's like over 40 games as far as I understand. Plus, if you switch the language to Japanese, you'll unlock a completely different library of Mega Drive games. So, if you enjoyed this episode of Memory Lane, don't forget to give a thumbs up and play some Sega Genesis. Definitely, I'm going to be playing some right now. Plug the controller in and play some Echo the Dolphin.